change your Twitter without your Instagram. Hello and welcome to the Katie Halber Show. We are doing a late night stream on this lovely evening and uh, really excited to have back in the, in the show, back on the show, back in the realm, in the orbit, this universe, Gabe Pacheco. Oh, hello. It's, it feels great to be back in the building, Katie. Yes, welcome back. Gabe and I used to co-host the Katie Halper Show. Uh, he's a comedian, a very funny man, an autodidact. I mean, you also went to college, but I feel like you teach yourself a lot of stuff. Yeah, I read, <laughs> I read on my own. You know, I've really been getting into some Octavia Butler lately. Look at you. Some, uh, some, some uh, uh, first uh, black woman sci-fi writer to gain fame in the United States. So That we know of. Yeah, that we know of. That we know. Well, to gain fame, exactly. Well, no, maybe someone was passing. That's, That's it. Thing, right? I hear you. I'm picking yeah. up what you're putting down. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. if H.G. Wells was actually yeah. a black woman? Woman, in yeah. Writing <laughs> under a, a, a white man name. To gain a platform. Right. Yeah, exactly. It could happen, Quite. right? Yeah. Why do people say that? Oh, look who it is. You're a big fan. We love him. Oh, hell so yeah. What's up? So... Uh, I, I love the avatar for uh, Phil Winter. That's, yeah. That's awesome. That's him. That's what he exactly what he looks like, except I never met him in a <clears throat> in a in the hat. But yeah, you mean how how uh, what's the word? How candid his expression is. Positive energy. Radiating, radiating off the avatar. Uh, yeah. Katie, what? So, are you vaxxed up yet? You got I'm Johnson and up. Johnson no. biceps. No, I got. Um, are you a Moderna girl? Moderna or, uh, girl. Moderna. Okay. Girl. Nice, nice, nice. I'm living in this Moderna world. I got that P Funk, that Pfizer. Oh, nice. P Funk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling great. I went to the Javits Center and I got my vaccine there a couple about almost a month ago. I feel very lucky. Um, thank goodness for those pre-existing conditions. You asthma? know, I got that got that asthma. All I had to do was show them my albuterol inhalers, and they knew what was up. They knew what was up. Yeah. Um, but what was really cool about getting it down there was the uh, the military was running the uh, the whole distribution. And, you know, I'm usually not a big fan, not a big fan of the military, yeah. but this, this felt like the uh, winning the hearts and minds uh, campaign, getting all those troops down there, uh, stabbing us and poking us with the, with, with the vaccines. This time with consent. That's right. With consent. Yeah. 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 But also the individual um, soldiers, it was just really nice to see My, almost, almost all the soldiers were like black and brown. Um, by you, Pox. You, you hate to see it usually when they're fighting, but you love to see it on the home yeah. front. <laughs> I love to see it on the home front. Right. In such high spirits, all just uh, talking trash, having a good time, joking yeah. with each other, really vibrant. And um, yeah, it was one of those moments where I was like, I feel like I'm in Starship Troopers and it's okay. Right. It's one of those rare moments where it's okay. Sure, um, sure. Yeah. And by the way, I just want to invite, remind everyone watching, we'll cut this out, but if you're on the show and you're a guest, make sure you're recording your own audio for that sweet, uh -huh. sweet audio sound. Sound. That's just, an, yeah, so just one, because I'm going to forget later. Anyway, so you got your va vaccine. Did people, you ever get, like, do people ever say things in front of you because they think um, that you're white? Uh, I'm a, I'm a white passing Latino. You're I'm ready passing, for, yeah. yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for white boy summer. Me and, uh, yeah. me and Ch Chet Hanks. Uh, I'm <laughs> actually ready for a BLM protest, uh, 3.0 summer. That's what it yeah. feels like. It's going to be, you know, if it's not already there, I feel like it is already there. It just doesn't, it, it we haven't gotten the same, uh, amount of, uh, of airplay as last year. Right. Yeah. And you were quite active. One second, uh, Brian Fredericks, thank you so much for ch chatting. And you are getting the Pfizer vaccine tomorrow. So excited. Well, Mazel Tov and Gabe can tell you all what it's all all about what it's like. And, um, you know, it would have been interesting if you had gotten a Johnson & Johnson shot in the Javits Center. But, Gabe, <laughs> but that would have been two J and J and J. Yeah. yeah what is the well, deal with that? Sorry. I, I I think uh, nobody should really fear the uh, side effects or anything. You know, I, I haven't, uh, I, I didn't get any shivers or shakes. And most people I know who who did get uh, mild discomfort, they were over it in within a day. That was me. So, 
Excuse yeah. me. I had on my second one, I had ch um, little fever aches. Little fever, but you had Nora to make you some chicken I noodle had Nora, soup. Nora, uh, yes, to make me some matzo ball soup, chicken noodle yeah. soup. Yeah. Um, no, I actually was not. I had who was I? I was, I was just on my own. I was on my own that weekend for various wow. reasons. I'm just I had a now friend. A friend was there. By myself. Oh, yeah. Sad. I'm um, gonna get vaccinated. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's interesting. That Johnson and Johnson stuff, huh? Like sure, sure. Clots, clots, like, clots, clots um, like uh, birth. I mean, that's one of the reasons I've never taken birth control because I don't believe in clotting. I'm anti-clotting. <laughs> I don't begrudge anyone. I know a lot of people take it, yeah. but I don't like messing with the hormones. I'm just saying, if we're gonna ban, like, what's up with that? I mean, what deep state shit is this that we're trying to ban that vaccine because, like, some people had clots? I'm just sure, saying, sure, sure. Suspicious. Well, I mean, the United States is it's we're we're wild, right? We're wild. Like how many um how many people have died from uh from uh, uh shooters in the last month and yet we'll never ban guns. Mm. But it's been like, you know, quadruple the number. Right. Of, I mean, of like, people yeah. dying from from a gun that's like right. something you can actually, you know, per day. Per day. Yeah. Versus I mean, a even vax higher, clot. Even, yeah, a vax yeah. clot. Is that what it's called or do you just make that up? That's where I'm at. That's where my head's at. The Vax Clots. That's going to be the name of the uh, the neo punk rock band. That uh, <laughs> it's really good. We should hashtag that. Yeah, 2021 punk rock Vax Clots. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I'm gonna guys. If you're watching this, by the way, please like this show. Please share. Please subscribe. And also, uh, get out on the social medias and tell people what's up. Tell people that they can watch this second Gabe Pacheco, and then you know who else they can watch shortly. Ed on Gueso. And then you know who they can watch shortly after that? Esha Krishnaswamy. That's all I'm saying yeah. is that people can tune in. And let me just pin this to my thing. Um, yeah, ma make, it make it happen. Make it happen. Join us here uh, on the Katie Hopper Show. Uh, get involved. Join the Patreon. Follow me yes. on IG. Uh, oh, Gabe that's Pack. Yeah, yeah. IG, yeah. Yeah, that's the IG. And also, I have a comedy show on Zoom every Wednesday night for anybody that hasn't gotten their vaccine yet and wants to stay safe and socially distanced. I'd say physically distant. You can socially connect, you know, get close socially, but but physically you stay distant. Yeah. Come and join us. Uh, and, and you can find um, Funhouse Comedy uh, on the Instagram at Funhouse Comedy. Yeah, that's and where you can find it. We'll send you a Zoom link day of, and you can watch the show. It's it's every Wednesday at nine thirty. How has that been, by the way? Like uh, doing it that way? Oh, it feels like church. It feels great. You know, it's a community. We get a lot of uh, repeat people uh, visiting us from all over the country, and I think it's better for performers in some ways because now I can connect with uh, with people all over the country. And right. we've, I've even had some international performers, usually within time zones that are convenient, like Mexico's easy. Right. Canada's is that, easy. Right. Yeah. North Americans. North Americans, yeah. yeah. Do you, do they know, do you, do you use your, or can we call them Mex, Nex, Mexic connections? I'm using a couple of my Mexic connections. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Mi gente, yeah. south of the border. When's the last time you've been there, by the way? Been over there. Well, uh, you know, I haven't been there for th four years, but um, my sister is uh, deeply embedded in an ayahuasca cult, and she's really trying to get me to go to Guadalajara next month over Memorial Day to uh, to do a little ceremony. Do it. So I'm thinking about it. I'm rolling the dice. Like I said, I got that P-Funk coursing through my veins. I got that Pfizer. So why not? Right. Yeah. Uh, I've heard a lot of great things about uh, uh, ayahuasca. Wow. Well, I, uh, having experienced it, I'd say, sure, sure. Go do it. Unless you've got some pre-existing, um, mental, mental conditions that maybe, uh, might lead you to, you know, if you're on like an SRR, what, what, what's right. what are some anti, if you're on some, uh, antidepressants, maybe chill, you know what yeah, I mean? What can happen if you're on those? Do you know? No, I don't. I, yeah, I'm not a scientist. No, it's not. Just... <laughs> <laughs> you're not saying you're just you just know i don't know you don't have to know how or why but you're just saying it's not a good idea it's not a good like, idea yeah like yeah yeah like your co whatever's mm -hmm. co indications i don't even know yeah your uh um, your co yeah not your comorbidities no what's the other yeah it's not like that yeah well gabe uh, uh 
we're going to bring in the next guest soon, but anything else you want to get off your chest? Like, I, I know we don't have you for long. You've been very generous with your time. We're going to have you on for longer next time. But anything else you want to talk about with just me in front, you know, if there's something intimate you want to bring up just with me and the 284 people watching, but you don't feel comfortable <laughs> telling Ed on Gueso and Esha Krishaswamy, it's, it's, it's totally cool. Katie, I, I love being here. I love seeing you. I'm sad that I, I don't see Bodhi. And uh, I, I want to say happy happy birthday again to your mom, who's wonderful. And I remember the last time we did that Gulf War uh, episode together. Oh, yeah, years and ago, yeah. it made me, thank you, uh, Contra Indications. Yes. Wonderful. La Bella. The, La Bella. Yeah. Um, but but uh, thinking back uh, to that episode we did with Nora and the vaccine, basically it was like, I had a good friend pass away from um, vaccines that he took right. to for, because of the Gulf War. Because he, my I, my friend, fought um, in the second Gulf War, right, like against invading Iraq. Yeah. But um, but one thing I read in the paper recently was that I think it's like forty percent of um, military don't want to take the vaccine. Interesting. Which is in which totally different on this part because this is some real uh like like columbus um conquistador uh smallpox blanket um imperialism right. if we send troops overseas that are not vaccinated that oh, could yeah. then transmit covid not cool not cool super not uncool cool. we're gonna give yeah. the, we're gonna come down and do that yeah you're right yeah that's and some so super ironic. bio warfare nonsense yeah and, and fu it's funny because we were just talking about earlier how they're okay giving it, but they don't want to take it. The whole thing is now in a mix. I don't even know where we're going, right? Because you were talking about the whole, the truth. Yeah. <clears throat> the truth this feels like an, an Adam Curtis documentary with no uh, clear uh, mission statement or like a way out. Right, no way, way out. out. <laughs> kind of There's... like the military. Kind of, oh my God. <laughs> no mission statement, no way out, colon, the U.S., Armed forces. Yeah. Hey, we're getting out of Afghanistan, but we're really not. We're just privatizing yeah. it. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, um, shall we? Let's bring in. Let's bring in the the other guests to to, to chat Love with that. us. Yeah. 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 All right. So we're bringing in Ed Angueso, who is a labor and tech reporter at uh, Motherload at Vice, and uh, you're recording your own audio, uh, Ed. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Did you, I love that you called it mother load. I think it's motherboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Mother the mother load. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. That sounds like something antibiotic ish or a vaccine ish. And then Esha Kirshaswamy, put your name and your uh, bio, your Twitter handle, and your. Uh, uh, oh. Is that me sounding like a monster? No. Do I sound like a monster? Uh, I muted you. Uh, hold on. Who was that? Oh, no. It's feedback. It was feedback from that. Okay. How's this now? It's all good now. All right, cool. All right. Hi, Esha. Esha, put in your in your thing or I can do it while you're talking about it. Okay, okay. I, oh, wait. It's, I think it's your feedback. Okay. Esha, let's see. Do me a favor. I muted you, not to silence you, but can you make sure that you've selected for your output? Do you have headphones on, by the way? Okay. Can you make sure that those are selected? Oh, she has them on in spirit, but not physically. That's the first step, because if you don't realize you need them, you're not going to get to that more material level. Right. Anyway, by the way, so Gabe, just some background. Gabe and I used to co-host the Katie Halper show. We had a kind of Rachel Dolezal relationship where uh, a lot of people think I'm Latina and uh, a lot of people think he's Jewish. Lo and behold, it's the reverse. Although the some old people switcheroo. Really, the old switcheroo. Some people are like, you're so clearly Jewish. But to be fair, there are Jutinos. Yeah, it's true. Well, also, I think I was raised, my formative years were raised uh, watching Seinfeld. So uh, you just, you pick up the mannerisms, you know what right. I mean? Right, whereas I was watching Chips, very invested in Eric Estrada's character. Mm. So I think that's exactly. what happened on my end. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, enthusiasm. Curb your enthusiasm is so much better than, than, than Seinfeld. Yeah. And by the way, sure. speaking of Chips, what are the odds? I don't talk about Eric Estrada a lot, probably because I'm ashamed about cultural appropriation. Just kidding. I barely watched an episode. But we talked about him the other day because, as you guys probably know, Someone, uh, Ryan Wentz, who's at um, Left Bitches, the podcast Left Bitches, who tweeted that he, I don't know if you guys remember this, someone was tweeted something about AOC, and the response to that tweet was that uh, Chips, California Highway Patrol, showed up at his home 
on behalf of the Capitol Police. Because you know what he had tweeted? Wow. No, go for it. He had tweeted that AOC's response to a question on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict had been underwhelming, to say the least. Wow. That sounds like a threat. That sounds real. <laughs> that sounds real intense. Did yeah, but underwhelming yeah. is loaded. That's a loaded. <laughs> loaded. Locked and loaded. Yeah. Did they confirm yeah. it was something else? Like maybe some shit post that he forgot, forgot no. about? No. <laughs> apparently... He, if you, I don't think he's the type of person who would forget about something like that. What happened apparently, and we're still waiting for the deets. Come on, guys. You got the Katie Halper show call out. You should be coming up with some excuses. Apparently what happened is that maybe someone responded to it in a, oh. in a way that said was even more threatening than um, <laughs> underwhelming, to say the least. Underwhelming on its own is one thing, but to say the least is kind of, that puts it over the top. Um, anyway, so well, let's bring back in to the chat. Let's see. Esha. Esha, are you there? Oh, wait. I think I... Uh, no, now we can't hear you. I feel like Kirby and, uh, you know, waiting for Guffman. Okay, now it's too loud. Why can't you talk like a normal person? Like the best thing ever. Um, can you can you do it so it's... um Your output is... Oh, yeah, there's a Zoom mic involved. Okay. Let's see. Um, why don't we... I'll play a... I'll show an image or something in a couple of minutes and bring in... Um, Esha, is that okay? Cool. Okay. I want it. Yeah. yeah. When Gabe when Gabe leaves, we'll do a little transition. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh, heartbreaking. But uh, well, Esha and I, we'll get to connect later. Oh yeah. We'll totally I, what I'm it, really yeah. interested in is we're talking motherboards, we're talking tech, we're talking robot dogs. That's where my that's where my head's at right now. I'm really mm -hmm. into like, you know, and uh, like cyborg bodies just running around policing people, pulling people over. That's the future. See, yeah. Oh, no. when, when your, um, you know, when your prime citizenship lapses because you forgot to pay for the year, then one of the robot dogs and a robot drone to make sure you don't hurt the robot dog will come and check up on you, you know? Oh, that's, this almost feels like it could be a Disney animated movie. <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> like an adorable robot dog and a drone Benji. robot chicken. Yeah. We're writing just the like Big Hero like... 6 sequel. That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> well, what's interesting is that if Bo Bodhi would be incredibly dangerous in this context because she is so cute. Mm -hmm. Gabe knows this because Gabe has met Bodhi in person. We have the yeah. footage. We have the photo. And um, she is so cute that if you made a dog that looked like her, I mean, all bets are off. That's mm -hmm. right. Right. A robot, right? you know, robot dogs might look like real dogs, and then like at some point, yeah, reveal the blaster, you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the ones that are coming around now are just scary and hideous. They're just robots with four legs. They're not really dogs. Yeah, you know? they're just, they're they're trying to be. Sure. Yeah, sure. they're trying. Yeah, they hate us because they ain't us. Exactly. Except I'm not a dog, so that doesn't really work. <laughs> but um, uh, Ed, what are you working on these days? Uh, I wanted to have you on to give like a post um post mortem on on the Amazon uh, Michigas, if you will. Uh, what are your thoughts? Did you think that the Amazon strike, uh, sorry, the unionization campaign would be successful? Was it all for naught? I mean, yeah, you know, I think um, I know me personally was, I was more hopeful. I, I was hopeful because I think that it wasn't until a little bit later into the, the drive that I had really started to dig into some of the limitations that were present beyond like the ex extraordinary, you know, union busting tactics, like, um, you know, the consequences of the turnover rate with the large um, and expanded bargaining unit size, with the fact that most of the ballots had already been cast by like, you know, February, um, you know, and I think over time, those things started to become clear and clear as, you know, things that might definitively ship ship it to um shift it to amazon's favor but you know i always i had hope in the sense that you know like you want um like a really evil wretched company like amazon to uh finally get it to do at least in, a, in some form or fashion and you know it didn't but i don't think that's the end of it you know there's going to be more campaigns of course there's going to be more ways for the for the people that are organized and i'm like really hopeful you know now that we've seen that union mobilized to see what happens next. 
Mm. So this wasn't the death nail in the union drive. This no. was just a, this was an early defeat in a, in a skirmish. Right. Yeah. And I think like, as, um, you know, we were talking with Alex Brass, who was on the ground there. We've been talking with like a bunch of other journalists who are down there, like my colleague, uh, you know, Lauren Gurley had done some on the ground reporting there too. And, you know, I think a lot of the discussions were about how, you know, no matter what, you're going to have to come back to Amazon again, right? Amazon's like the second largest private employer. Amazon warehouses are particularly like, you know, sites of experimentation for new exploitative technologies and automation That's technologies. Right. Dog overseers. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Right now it's algorithmic overseers and then it'll be dogs eventually. And mm -hmm. so the, the fights, you have to fight Amazon. You have to organize Amazon, right? No matter what, even if you lose here, you have to do it elsewhere. And there've been developments and warehouses across the country where they've been inspired to, or, uh, either because of this fight or because of how bad the working conditions are where they are, you know, like in Chicago where they have these mega cycles, which are graveyard ships, right. You know, in, um, you know, in Minnesota, where they also have a plant that has been the site of a particular, amount, like a you know, pretty long-standing amount of like activism and, and organizing. Uh, New York, you know, these are places where there will be, I expect, more fights to emerge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had Alex Press on, um, who who had some, who basically, you know, she was like, even if no matter what happens, this is already a major victory mm -hmm. um, in terms of coming this far. Right, you know, yeah. We should say publicly, officially, though. That's it. It's over. <laughs> nothing to, no, nothing to right. see here, folks. That's it. Yeah, put away the gun, We'll yeah. never do it again. We yeah, we'll never do it again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> put, the, put the big drapings over your spying canaries so that they go to right. sleep. The robot yeah. canaries. <laughs> yeah, you can turn off the eye of Sauron. You know, you don't have to keep that <laughs> on anymore. We're going to be good, I promise. <laughs> And what other things uh, should we be, uh, you know, on the lookout for in this surveillance state in which we live? Um, you know, BuzzFeed News has been doing really good uh, reporting on Clearview AI, which is, um, you know, that facial recognition company that claimed it had been, you know, working with dozens, hundreds of police departments. And then it turned out they actually have been working with a lot of places. And so BuzzFeed released like a full list of that. Um, has been talking to some of those places if they knew there's the students at these like school districts or you know in these community people who live in these communities didn't know that facial recognition tech was being used on them you know uh, antitrust is also like another area that's been growing more and more interesting the house just like you know finally endorsed the house antitrust report and that calls for pretty radical changes that would ban a lot of tech companies, most tech companies from like operating the way that they do, you know, in multiple industries that are on this uh, multiple sides of the same market. Yeah. And Gabe, I know you have to go, but I just wanted to give you a chance if you had any questions for Ed, he, he's Gabe, I know you're very interested in Uber um, and gig workers. Um, so <laughs> you can have, give you, you can talk about it next time you're on, but I know yeah. you talked a lot about this issue. Um, so, in, in the interest of full transparency, I just want to tell you that. All right, so we're all good. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm uh, happy, happy to, uh, we should we should talk more offline, Ed. I'm very, I'm yeah. just interested in these robot dogs uh, tech. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, in, I'm interested in uh, old, I don't know if this falls into tech, but like uh, the idea that old movies might now start getting, um, getting uh, advertising put in them. Sort what? of following the George, have you? I just saw this in on the BBC. The sort of George oh, no. Lucas model of how he would put, uh, you know, change like the animated characters in Star Wars. Like it, you can't even watch like the original version of it anymore. Oh yeah, but, uh, <laughs> you know that. this idea now that maybe um, since everything is just like commodified, you could there might be like the Godfather. Imagine that they, they you watch the Godfather now streaming. And they just have uh, commercials for Coca Cola, just put in it everywhere, like embedded. Not not as though the the, the film wouldn't break, but just like right. uh, yeah, that'd be weird if or like just <laughs> in terms of the camera. I love Coca Cola. You know? <laughs> I I like that Michael Corleone like drinking a Coke right after he shoots the guy and the guys in the head and the you come to me on, it, yeah in the middle of my Coke break. <laughs> 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 Um, 
I just, yeah, just tech, just tech. It's fascinating. I love it. I can't yeah. get enough. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have another, uh, we'll have to have another, uh, tech chat. Tech yeah. chat with Ed yeah. and Gabe. That'd be Sweet. great. That'd All be right. Great. Gotta All get right. your GED. Go. Wow. That's great. Okay. Bye, Gabe. I'll see you later. Bye, Bye. friends. Yeah. I see you. That was Gabe Pacheco. Great appearance. That that Ashkenazi. I can't believe he's not Ashkenazi. Stressful look at the end because I'm keeping <laughs> it going long. That Jewish goodbye. Uh, we're going to bring in Esha Kirshaswamy, who is the host of Historically, the great podcast. Hi, Esha. Hi. Um, a uh, long time no see, and Ed still owes me an article about Cindy <laughs> Brzezinski that he promised about him. <laughs> I have to, I have to write it, but yeah, no, it's been flooding in my mind. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, so, I, yeah. Uh, so we're still well waiting on this, but um, hopefully it'll be by the end of the year, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll sit down and I'll write it. I promise. I okay, will. no worries. Um, so uh, how is uh, everyone doing? And um. I really liked your article. Were you the one who wrote the article about the CIA's new branding logo? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Was it, was, it was, uh, they are trying to recruit millennials, it seems like, and they think they like doing a streamlined sort of new wave font and branding will uh -huh. prove how diverse they are and how, you know, this is, this is a cool job. It's not like an office job. You get to do exciting stuff. You get to kill all, like you know. Like dump people out of helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, rendition people. You get to travel, you know, see new sites. Oh, new who black doesn't sites. like that? Yeah. yeah. Who doesn't I like that? Well, you also wrote, um, that was back in January, and we can definitely, that looks good, that article. Uh, uh, the CIA is rebranding itself as a ruthlessly, as ruthlessly woke as part of an effort to better represent the populations of countries it has helped devastate <laughs> and destroy. And the, the, the title of the article is Inspiring, colon, CIA rebrands to attract diverse operatives. That's very important. We should get to that. And I love that you cover that. In fact, we should have you on as a, your regular beat should be, you should do a woke washing report. Oh, woke yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll talk about the astroturfing a lot of companies do. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, For me, the one thing that triggers me is if they're like involved in the Holocaust, I just don't want them to do any woke tweeting or woke washing. So, like Bayer, just stop tweeting. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. you mean involved in the, not like the Holocaust Museum? You mean Bayer, like um, um, IG Farben? Right. Right. Involved that way, not yeah. in the yeah got yeah, it yeah like Bayer right. should not be woke tweeting about anything like it that just gets on me on my nerves yeah well uh i also want to ask you about an article uh that you have that's recent ed called senators call on biden to temporarily waive vaccine patents mm -hmm. so can you tell us about that yeah so the patents so this is trade agreement that comes out of um 1995, 96, uh, called the TRIPS Agreement. It's basically, you know, a treaty between member states of the World Trade Organization to protect the rights of transnational companies uh, when they are creating intellectual property. Uh, and in this case, specifically intellectual property around medicines, right? Um, and these, you know, it gives them monopoly rights, right? It gives them the ability to, you know, sue for damage. Well, it's part of like a series of um, developments that get, eventually give them the power to sue for damages, uh, to block uh, countries from you know, having access to them, charging whatever rates that they want to individual companies, um, you know, pretty restrictive licensing. You know, this sort of stuff is the bedrock of how country, how big pharmaceutical companies are able to, you know, make up and get price gouge, you know, the global south, but also one of the reasons why there's differential access to vaccines across the world because of these really strict um, restrictions and, you know, robbery, like highway robbery uh, that they do. And so the the idea here is, you know, like 100 people in the House already support this, a group of senators support this, almost every single public health official, you know, talking about this would support this. Um, waiving these IP rights, you know, uh, India and South Africa, I think want to do it, or I've been talking about doing it permanently, but their proposal is temporarily for the crisis so that you can locally manufacture stuff you need to diagnose, test and manufacture vaccines. And also the foreign minister of Philippines today mentioned that apparently the U S like ordered way more than they needed and they're just hoarding it. So they should just like, if they could like subtract the population and then they can give it to other countries that need it. 
But on the other hand, um, Russia and China are both letting Serbia manufacture their own vaccine, like their version of, of the, that. So this is like a purely, U it's a U.S. thing, I think. Yeah, you know, like other countries, earlier there were, I remember there's like in these cycle where it's like, oh, North Korea is trying to steal the vaccine. It's like, good. Good. You know, good. I'm pretty, you, know you should steal it. And, and I, I don't want to say anything country. to get myself arrested or thrown into prison, <laughs> but if I, I definitely will not assist anyone in doing that. Don't come to me. <laughs> As if I, I had access to any of that, yeah. You know, like these yeah. lights are legitimate. But, but I did, um, Kim Jong-un's sister is on Facebook and I tried to message her, but she hasn't responded, so. Rude. I know, and I'm like, come on, you have to come to my podcast, but. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah you're trying to get a yeah. yeah. <laughs> is she speaking English well? I don't know. <laughs> no. right. Well, have you, all right, you may have to get a translator. Yeah. For both well, the exchange and the. Yeah, so first you have to see if she ever responds, but yeah. And... <laughs> yeah, she's probably playing hard to get. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, what is the like is there any uh doesn't seem like there's any justification for this, even though people love pretending like, oh, we can't do that because if you do that, why how are drug companies ever gonna be interested? You don't have to have drug companies, you can have a, a government <laughs> manufacture drugs like the Sinovac in China or the Sputnik mm -hmm. in Russia. Yeah. Or whatever Cuba. Oh, Cuba's made a third version oh, yeah. of their own vaccine too. Love that. That's so great. That's also that's what this gets at. You know, the big pharmaceutical companies make such a stink about it. One because it threatens their massive amount of profits. Like when they eventually do booster shots, when they eventually do you know whatever comes down the line to for global south uh, countries in the global south. Um, but they also make a stink of it because it's like if you start waiving the rights, it's not that far of a leap to say why are we even like letting you do it, you know, we're we paying should. for the research and you're just profiting off of the tail end of development. Right. I mean, there are some drugs where because the patent expired, like there's a drug that is very good for heroin addiction, but the patent expired. So they won't let them come in the U.S. because it's not worth even the money to do the FDA trials and just ridiculous things like this happen. So, right. You know, and that's also another thing, right, because we have like a market centered approach to it, then our regulatory apparatuses are, you know, that much weaker, right? Where they're not going to test a drug because of, you know, if, it, if it's yeah. available to the public, it just won't make money. When you should be testing on the basis of whether it will help the public, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good uh, myth. We got to bust. We got to bust that myth right there. So what's the shorthand? We don't need markets. We don't need pharmaceuticals. No, no, we need, uh, I mean. We need markets. Tell me, the, tell me straight up. Tell me we, that we I need probably the, the need markets bite. because I, I have like if I have cotton and you have iron, we might need to do it a little yes, bit of in that sense. But we don't need the uh, cutthroat yeah. capitalism. Exactly. We don't so need capitalism. what? What is the thing? Well, okay, we don't need it. But what's the what's the baby step away from it? Like what could happen right now? We could, you know, public funding already happens for a lot of medical and you know scientific advances and innovations so instead of then privatizing the end result just keep it public oh keep and on top of that we could also um withdraw that provision from uh, the gat and the wto mm -hmm. and that like mm -hmm. that is basically putting a leash on most um i guess countries all over the world uh so i, I would say even if at least like don't bully other countries, just like do it here, do whatever you want here is kind of my thing. Oh my God, yeah. What did they just do with like people are, I mean, they're like, they're not even able to use like, um, uh, what Glenn Greenwald tweeted this. It's like, okay, hot, t short take, basically things are awful in Brazil with COVID. I don't remember yeah. the excruciatingly painful article where they're like, they don't even have sedatives and stuff for people. Yeah. Um, yeah. But didn't, who was it? I was trying to remember who it was. Was it, which administration was it that like pressured Bolsonaro to not take the Sputnik vaccine? Oh, that is 100% uh, USA. Um, it, it doesn't even matter. But um, Pfizer w wanted to like have like these military bases like as a collateral. It was like, totally unhinged. And so every other country besides Brazil were like, okay, we're going to get the Sputnik or the Sinovac. And yeah. Yeah. They so, want yeah. military base. You know, it was love, like, Google this. it. Like, it was crazy. Let me see if I can find it. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, Boof Ed says, in India, they patent the production method rather than the actual content mm -hmm. of drugs. Not sure how this applies. Oh, what, in India, they also have something called license of right. So I remember about four, five years ago, the CEO of Bayer, like Bayer lost a patent because he 
didn't make it affordable. And he said something like, we don't make drugs for Indians. We make it for Westerners who can afford it. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, the, I don't even understand how bears still exist after all they've done. It's ridiculous. You know, it's uh, the best examples, I think, are also when com- countries are faced with that. And then they're just like, fuck you. And they make the they yeah, steal that's, it and they but- make it. India's done it once. South Africa. And South think, Africa did it with HIV drugs. Brazil, oh, okay. Somebody's done it. done it with the malaria drug, but I can't remember who. I think it was. Uh, was it Brazil? Brazil has done. Brazil and South Africa, I think, are the two examples that I remember where they broke it, and the the breach was like so egregious that the company just came back and negotiated with them at a substantially lower price and mm-hmm. what they were trying to gouge them for. Yeah. Huh. As I've they been, should. Yeah. <laughs> they should. Yeah. <laughs> I've been learning, I've been doing a lot of research on the whole um, privatization scheme and the new Cold War. So I've been like, I would need to, I need to have you on the pod to talk about the other tech issues. Sure, I can come. Yeah, whenever. That'd be cool. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, that sounds good. I think it is, you know, the privatization, you know, same with digitization. Digitization is usually marketed as like a way to make things more optimal, but it's really just to privatize things, right? What is digitization? It's just like when you say, oh, we're going to put your healthcare on the cloud. We're going to put it through like this new technical implement, right? We're going to add smart devices to the city to optimize traffic flow. Uh-huh. Or to optimize, oh, okay. So like know. the smart sewers that people. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. But then what happens when you do that? You just privatize the municipal services. Ah, okay. Yeah. It's really, I feel like we should very much like use this moment of COVID before. I mean, it's not going to be getting gotten rid of. But like, there's going to be probably a lull. Maybe it'll be gotten rid of, but I don't think it's going to be in part because we don't have like all countries. Have you gotten your vaccine yet? Yeah, I got them both. Me too. I got my I got my second one yesterday, so my nice. shoulder still hurts. Yeah. Well, you may get sick uh, like tonight or tomorrow. Okay. That's what happened with me. Um, but like, uh, I mean, this is just so root. It's so gross. It's like so. Uh, unconscionable that it happens. I agree. And like, we should definitely be making PR. I was thinking we should just like make the lives miserable of all the people who are making these decisions. How? Um, well, okay. Who first? I need to know who they are. Oh, I can tell you. Okay, and then we'll figure out the strategy. Okay, but first we need to identify them. Council yeah. for Foreign Relations has this like really psycho task force that has like all, like all the horrible people, and they always get an audience almost like every Friday with Biden. I think. Oh, okay. Oh, love it. All right. So we got to <laughs> we got to make send them a lot of glitter bo- uh glitter things. I wasn't even make ugh, I'm, glitter boxes. Gonna... Yeah, that I actually no <laughs> put, you know that you can mail people a pine- <laughs> That's coconut. The word. <laughs> or yeah. potato. Oh, I think you can mail people coconuts and then it like ends up like if it like drops on them it like like it's very inconvenient like pineapple yeah, well, co- yeah an inconvenient truce that's what we can call this operation exactly. <laughs> um i just wanted so just to give people the facts which which ed has been giving but just to round it out with some pros uh you wrote on friday senator bernie sanders and a group of democratic senators called on the biden administration to imp- issue a temporary waiver of copyright rules that are preventing countries in the global south from locally manufacturing covid19 diagnostics treatments and vaccines so here are some of the people on uh and crucially, this would allow companies in the global south to make clones of the Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson vaccines without being sued. The letter was also signed by Elizabeth Warren, good on her, Raphael Warnock, good on him, and seven other Democratic senators. C- come on. I think we should be able to get more. Yeah, we should. And hopefully we will. I mean, in the House, there's like 100 lawmakers that have already supported it, I think. So um, that number is growing. A bunch of countries, 100 you know, 130 plus countries support this. It's really just the United States and, you know, a few Western holdouts who don't want this to happen and instead are fine with vaccine nationalism because they want to negotiate with these drug companies, secure a supply for their population and hoard it, essentially. Right. It's also one of those things where it's like just out of a sense of self-interest, you should app- you should want this to happen. Yeah, right. The longer, because... Like, as things are right now, vaccination for the Global South happens, like, full vaccination, what, 2022, or at the earliest 2022, but more likely, like, 2023, 2024. That's two years, three years in which we have a chance for mutations to occur simply because the virus is going to be out there for hundreds of, and potentially, in fact, like, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people, who knows. And, 
you know, each mutation that we keep hearing about is more infectious and transmissible, it seems, right? So why not just do a full vaccination? It's in the, it's in everyone's interest, but it doesn't make you know money. So that's okay. so awful. It's so awful. Why is that permitted in this world? Because they because capitalism won, <laughs> you know, because uh, because capitalism won. So. Well, this is why it's so good. No matter what you would think about China and Russia, like thank God, thank the Lord, who doesn't exist. Thank whatever you believe in. Thank the God I wish I believed in that like the U.S. is getting challenged on this by other, you know, countries like, you know, I, there was some article in the Washington Post about this and, and they were framing it as, you know, the adversarial um, authoritarian adversarial countries are, are kind of like uh, we're leaving the floor wide open, seating uh -huh. ground to them. It's like, yeah. okay, yeah, whatever it takes to make it so that the United States actually wants to uh, vaccinate people. Yeah, you know, it is interesting, like, the way they will whip themselves into shape. Like, because we are so free, we decided not to make the vaccine free. And now the unfree countries are making it free. <laughs> you know, stuff yeah. like that. Oh. Sure, yeah. I, I mean, the United States has been, uh, uh, well, re like, Two days ago, Biden sanctioned this weird construction oh, yeah. company in Russia. Uh, all of the things he sanctions happens to be always state owned, but it's because they built a bridge from Russia to Crimea that, uh, and they're apparently transporting like fifteen thousand people back and forth to get to get actually good jobs because in Ukraine the standard of living has dropped to like even worse than India right now, and so. That's the what they're sanctioning is actually building a bridge, and they sanctioned the public bridge company, which is like totally weird. Well, not weird, but you know why they're doing it. But they're also extra paranoid because China is going to build like a super high speed train from like Moscow all the way, I don't know, like uh. Bangladesh. And that's the Belt and Road Initiative. And the US has actually admitted that they're incapable of building trains like China, like China's only country in the world that has that technology but they still don't want china to build that train because god knows, well because it's, it, yeah it's so wild you know something like one belt one road is that the, the new United name States, no that, i think that was the original name now it's okay. belt and road okay and the um you know like something like that some large engineering project if you're really scared about it being a geopolitical thing then why not join up with I mean, that should be, it should actually be something we all do together where we build macro scale, you know, infrastructure to connect large parts of the world. And instead it's just like fodder, right? For freaking out about whether or not China, Chinese influence is growing. Yeah, well, I mean, what they're really worried about, I, I checked this and actually China's um, doing the opposite of imperialism in that like actually Latin American countries came to China and asked them to like be part of that initiative. And it seems like they have, they're, they're just kind of laying down some seaports with very little conditions. So there's no reason why anyone would choose the U S other than being scared that the U S is going to bomb them. And that's kind of what's going on is that for the U S military bases, they like they want their military bases, but if the U.S. builds a seaport, they're you know they're gonna have to do a structural adjustment, IMF, blah blah blah. And oh, Djibouti, how do you pronounce that? Djibouti. Mm -hmm. yeah, they Djibouti. actually got China to build a, another port, so it's kind of like sharing it. And I guess so. It is an imperialism thing, but it's. I mean, come on. Like, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Giannis Varoufakis had this really interesting talk where he said, you know, like, for some of the deals, right, of course, like, um, some of the deals, for example, in Kenya, right, where they uh, will come in uh -huh. and offer, you know, generous terms, but then, like, if you don't meet, you know, the project goals, it's like, okay, then you have to offer something serious up as, as leverage. And in like some cases in Kenya, they've offered up huge ports as leverage. And so like, he'll talk, he's talked about how like, you know, in those instances, right, you know, the immediate uh, takeaways that it's just operating on the same imperialist logic, but the imperialist logic would not have done the generous terms. Yeah. Would not have also tried to actually do 
uh, development that seems local or uses people who are local to the region, even if like that doesn't end up happening. And so those are like huge divergences from uh, from like what the U.S. led development project would look like versus like what the Chinese. Uh, exactly. In fact, I was reading the Council for Foreign Relations and they clearly said that like, OK, the way they framed it is something like China is exasperating ethnic tensions by allowing Exas local control. Exacerbating. Is that the word? How do you pronounce it? Exacerbating. They're exacerbated by how it's, they're exacerbating. Yeah, yeah. Exacerbating. Yeah. Uh, they're exa yeah, exacerbating. Um, uh, tensions, ethnic tensions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, hold on. I actually have the. Uh, 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 yeah. Um, and it, it's it like, oh, okay. It says the lack of transparency surrounding BRI projects has encouraged corruption and exacerbated ethnic polarization. Um, so apparently, and by that, they mean like basically they're letting Kenya uh, hire a local people without any oversight. And I mean, this is totally. Oh, oh, I got it. Yes. Meanwhile, the hands-off nature of Chinese firms building the BRI projects enable local Kenyan partners to award jobs and supply contracts along tribal and ethnic lines, exacerbating ethnic polarization in the country. Like that sounds like they're just like letting local people handle it, and the U.S. is calling it ethnic polarization. Yeah, they're inflaming ethnic tensions there because uh, we're letting them work instead of just sending their own workers. <laughs> I don't know what's going Yeah, and it seems like, yeah, it, it, it's, I, I think it is going to be good because you need these kind of fast pay, like you have to have a train because right now in South Africa, there are trains that go to this Kimberley gold mine that no one uses, but it's there, but there's no train that goes to where people are. So mm -hmm. people... And and so it's kind of like the U.S. wants people in Africa to, ha I don't know, not have that fast, um, convenient life, but they still want to help them. I don't, I don't understand how what what what, what, what besides the what Walter Rodney said about intentional part. Like it seems like they don't want the convenient life, and so it's they've made it an and or thing with climate change, in my opinion. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like th that the. Uh... Yeah, most of the development projects, or a lot of the development projects, because I don't know all of them, but like a lot of the development projects that the United States would get behind to feel like they're, we're going to help you develop like a capacity to export resources for us. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's it, instead of like figuring out another way to industrialize, yeah, modernize without, um, you know, resource intensive, uh, fossil fuels, uh, fossil fuel intensive, you know, technologies or ways of life. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I've really noticed. And um, this, yeah, uh, uh, and it seems, uh, but I don't, Ed, what do you think? Like, how far is the U.S. going to go with this, like, new, be alleged, because they were doing some weird things in the South China Sea last week. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, I think... Um, I, I, it, I don't know, like, how far in terms of, like, would it ever go to, I mean, I think it would ins be insane to, like, have some outright military conflict. But, like, you know, a lot of people really do believe that um, if the United States is not, like, ruling the world, or at least not in charge of the coalition of powers that are ruling the world, then uh, whoever steps up and is, if it's not us, is mm -hmm. going to pose, like, a serious threat to capitalism everybody. all right capitalism our way of life liberalism so on and so forth um and that if it's china then we're all gonna <coughs> oh my gosh wow <laughs> was that a loud uh, cough yeah sorry that's okay it, it, so it's like you know i think a lot they really believe in it and they'll push you know they love they've been playing in the south china sea for what years now decades now it's not even it's not even our fucking sea and <laughs> we have we have warships there all the time and and demand the right to put them there right uh, I mean, okay it's... katie um i don't know if you can see this but um let me see yeah, if you send them i can play yeah uh it, no no it's just a picture oh. it, it's really stupid um uh i have a dog by the way a dog um whatchamacallit video dog uh are those your cats making noise yeah they've been making so noise. cute here, okay. I, I sent you yeah. the uh, in the in the in the in the chat in the private chat. Um, yeah. it's just an image. It, it and this is like 
I think this was a few years ago, maybe two or three years ago, but not too. Oh my God, this is so funny. Are you sure this is real? Yes, 100% real. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm not, I, can someone, all right, we're going to check in real time just because it's, I can't believe it, but I, all right, hold on. Ready? No, no, here's a CNN link to that. Um, okay, good. Okay, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Um, it's 100% real. so funny. <laughs> Guys, can you see this? It says for people just listening, it's a, it's a newspaper. Uh, and it, the headline is China may be using sea to hide its submarines. And here's the link to the newspaper article. Too. And it's from I'm Seattle. Like, it's from um, oh, that's good. Seattle <laughs> Times. The Seattle yeah. Times. Wow. China may be <laughs> trying to hide submarines in South China Sea. Uh, U.S. Oh. officials and many of China's neighbors are alarmed by China's construction of artificial islands and military facilities in the South China Sea, given its growing fleet of nuclear submarines. I mean, I, what I don't get is like, you can make whatever anti like China PR arguments, but like, why would you, why are you just, that's the dumbest headline. You're just like, <laughs> you're, you're like drawing attention to the stupidity of it. Like you could have easily gone with what China sneakily builds like nuclear powers under yeah. sea. Like, why would you say using sea to hide its submarines? I don't know. Where else do submarines go? Uh, good question. Um, and I, I thought all submarines, because so they were funny. so deep, had some sort of like nuclear, long-term nuclear power. Oh. I could be wrong, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think so, right? That most of them do need to because they are operating for such a long time underwater at high pressure away from like any port. That is so funny. Oh, my God. It's, it's also like, what's the name of the sea? Oh, South, South China, China sea. sea. Okay. Why does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> it's really kind of scary. Why are they taking over that sea? Why, Why? are they putting their name on that sea? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you, and this is Stuart Leavenworth. Oh, was this at McClatchy? He was a McClatchy foreign uh, <laughs> staff. Uh, U.S. officials, okay, I already read it. Beijing, for months, China's visible construction of artificial islands and military facilities in the South China Sea has alarmed U.S. officials and many of China's neighbors. What is happening under the water is also worrisome, say several defense and security analysts. Say several. Okay, let's see if any of them are named. Oh, yeah, they will be. Okay. China has a growing fleet of nuclear submarines armed with ballistic missiles. Missiles. The expansion of its claim on the South China Sea may be intended to create a deep water sanctuary known in military parlance as a bastion where its submarine fleet could avoid detection. The South China Sea would be a good place to hide Chinese submarines said Carl Thayer, a U.S.-born security specialist who has taught the University of New South Wales and other Australian institutions. The seafloor is thousands of meters deep in places with underwater canyons where a submarine could easily devoid detention. De sorry, detection. Conflicts in the South China Sea are expected to be a major focus of annual U.S. Sino talks that start... Okay, this is amazing. Yeah. This is from 2015, but I mean, it doesn't. I, but, but things have not like, changed since then, really. Like they're talking about how China's doing. Uh, there's a little I forgot, but uh, they're ta like China is like the, like they're trying to get the Philippines involved, and the Philippines is like, go away, I don't want to be involved in this. And uh, so the U.S. wants like other countries to like deploy things in the South China Sea instead of like let ju just China have the uh, just it's their sea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, you know what I don't get is like, no matter what you think of China, like, and, and their intentions, I guess it's like, wh why shouldn't, like, if you're critical of the US, don't you want another country? Like, don't our, isn't a multipolar world better than a US led world? Oh, even if you like, even, even if you just, I think I asked Chomsky this on, he's like, well, it's better to have, you know, less concentrated power well it depends on like, who... no matter what your ideology is shouldn't unless you're what am i saying anyone from a left like people who call you tanky right uh, everyone Ashka? calls you tanky <laughs> right. either respectfully or derisively but the people who are critical of you and call you a tanky it's like okay fine you may hate china like you may not like china they're that what they do in their countries or think that they're not they don't have good motives abroad but isn't it doesn't everyone realize that like it's Mark. good for countries to push them each other into doing the right thing. Well, one thing that people don't realize is that it's not countries because the U.S. Is, essentially operates as a wing of uh, some like the corporate wing of the big corporation, the extractive corporations in Africa and the tech corporations in Asia. 
And um, with China, a lot of and Russia even, but not as much. But in China, a lot of these functions are private, uh, are not private. And so it is like the the way their corporate structure is set up. It's it's meant to go to the people. So in many of these instances, and so you don't even have to look at the motive. Just look at their corporate structure and look at who's profiting and who's not, and what incentives they have. And what you'll realize is that a lot of this is just like China trying because they have a billion people. Right. It's them trying to lift up, like get like the high priced goods that they could trade so that they can just kind of lift up people from like utter poverty. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, China's I, rich and America's rich are competing. That's what someone said. No, China's not rich because they have a billion people. So if you so they're, they're saying China's, they're saying the wealthy of China. That what what they're saying rich is that the rich people in each. I'm just telling what they're saying. I'm not defending their perspective. Oh no, oh, he's talking about the people, not the country itself. Yeah, right. Uh, I don't think so because, like I said, the structure is a little different with China's rich because in China, there's only a certain number of industries that can be privatized. So construction can never be privatized. Um, um, oil, all the energy stuff can never be privatized. And what's the, there's another big one. I forget what that is. But then a lot of these like little, uh, like the tech industries, they can be privatized. But I don't really, I guess... The fi- maybe the five G thing could be that, but I'm not a hundred percent. How uh, who if if Huawei is doing it, it's a worker co op and it's not private. It's like only one third owned by workers, so it's not the same thing. I'd say because of yeah, it, just the corporate structures look different. Um, and Ed, where uh, speaking of which, or not speaking of which, shifting gears, the opposite. I'm sorry. By the way, everyone, we were celebrating my mom's birthday. I'm very tired, but I realized I needed to do this stream, and it's, it's a great right. stream. It's not like I'm, you know, it's not like, oh, I put it. It's a great stream. I'm saying I'm sorry because I'm look. my eyes look a little whatever because I'm mm-hmm. dehydrated. That's why I'm starting. Oh, I feel like I got that. Is, yeah. that, is that dehydration or is that never sleeping? Like, it's both it? probably. Yeah. Why are you not sleeping? I well, not, not, never. But <laughs> Oh, you do have insomnia. Yeah. Well, maybe you got to drink more water. Would that help? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> my water bottle has like a timer. So at eight o'clock, what? nine. So. Yeah. I, oh, a timer. I thought you meant like it went like beep beep timer. No. Oh, Not the, yeah. Got I it, see. Yeah. That's so actually, you get I enough water. I want to get one of those. You know what? I'm going to get one. Them. Let's make I'll some Katie one. Helper show ones. Okay. Yeah. Send me one, please. Yeah. Also, um, uh, I'm starting, by the way, and then we'll, we'll go to my my next question for you. Um, stop saying I'm buzz. I'm not buzz. My next question for you, um, Ed, is about your Amazon article about muscle. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but um, everyone should know. By the way, everyone should like this stream. Everyone should subscribe to this channel. Have you subscribed? You literally just pressed press subscribe and then the bell. And then, no, I'm not stoned either. And then um, <laughs> I'm not going to die from drinking too much water because I'm so bad at uh, drinking water. Wait, wait Katie, maybe we shouldn't look at the uh, uh, trolls. Oh, maybe. right. Yeah. Okay. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, where? You see, I need Leslie Lee. He keeps me in line. And oh we no! Only I, I, read, I actually have no, to. No, we get... only read the the. Hold on, we only read the people who are. Oh no, we only read. Hold on a second. We only no. This is not true. All right, uh, enough. I'm 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 getting uh, out okay, of here. Okay, so the way I do it is I I, I have an awesome producer now, Janet, and so she like I can't see anything that's going on for Sunday yeah, with I, Lennon, I, 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 So yeah. we I actually don't see anything that the trolls do. So until the end, right. Well, what happens is Leslie Lee will make me, I ignore the trolls and uh, unless, well, Leslie Lee and Brad both help me with the, with the comments and Leslie Lee will highlight them when they, you have to pay to troll. If you want to troll, you got to cough up some money, but um, everyone, I want to make sure people support if you can patreon.com slash the Katie helper show. Again, it's patreon.com slash the Katie helper show. Also subscribe. That's free. And, um, I'm starting to do this thing on Twitch. It's not really YouTube material, but on Twitch, I'm going to uh, do a morning pages water challenge. Morning pages democracy now water challenge, morning otherwise pages? known as yeah. Morning pages is this thing where you journal. Um, yeah. yeah, you journal, and uh, you wake up and you journal. Okay, it's very good. I get a lot of stuff off my chest. Morning I had a little bit of, it's a yeah, we'll do it. You can come. 
it's, okay. it's from Julia Cameron's The Artist Way. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to drink a lot of water because I just mm -hmm. don't drink water. And if I do in front of people, honestly, not in front of people in some weird fetish way. If I say to people we're doing it mm -hmm. and then I have to deliver, then I have to deliver. So that's going to be on Twitch. Um, and then we go over headlines, Democracy Now! headlines, and we react to them. And I guess I'm going to do like... Why Democracy like, Now! Did they do hot something? Hot or good? not. What can it be? Like, not hot or not. Like, good or bad. Like, democracy. I don't know. I have to think about it. Okay. Did What's Democracy on? Now! do something cringe? Were they? Oh, I mean, look. Here's the thing. You know that I have a lot of guests who are critical of Democracy Now! Some of my fa favorite guests can't seem to go a, a stream without mentioning them. And I agree with a much of their criticism of Democracy Now! So we're never going to read anything they say about Russia or Syria. Okay. Or China or, or China. Venezuela or like, like actually anything. Did they really do it on Venezuela? Oh my God. They actually, last year during the Bolivia coup thing, they oh. invited this guy who's a kind of like a exile who smeared Evo Morales. But they had a, uh, did they, oh yeah. No, you don't need that in a debate. You have the entire Washington Post. Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, the line. No, they've um, told democracy lie in wait, now all the line. Yeah. But okay. So we are not uncritical, but it's a great place to get headlines. And you know what? If I don't like a headline, I won't read it. But I'll tell you. Brad writes, democracy whenever it's not too much trouble. Doesn't roll off the tongue. That's true. <clears throat> anyway, so that's twitch.com. What is it? Twitch TV? I don't even know what it is. But we're also doing a Discord. Um, independent left. If you're in there in the chats, you can talk about that. And we can tell people to do that. But, yeah, of course I would interview Amy Goodman. All right. So, um Let's go to your other article, and then we'll talk to you, uh, Esha, about um, Sundays with Lenin, yes. and also historically. But, Ed, can you tell us about this article about Amazon muscle use? Hold on. Yeah. Um, can somebody share this article with me? Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing that right now. Hold on. So, okay. basically, you know, Bezos, uh, Jeff Bezos and his last shareholder letter as CEO of um, Amazon – wrote this sort of conciliatory, you know, letter being like, oh, you know, we are the best company ever, but we haven't always been the best to our warehouse and delivery drivers, so we're going to become the safest place ever. And to do that, instead of making the workload easier, instead of reducing our intense and inhumane quotas, instead of reducing the demands we expect of drivers, and warehouse workers were going to create an algorithm that will assign them work based on the muscle group so that they don't ever get an injury based on overusing a certain muscle group. How do they figure out what muscle groups they use? I asked them for more information and they did not even respond. So, <laughs> so, oh. All right, Amazon, know. what are you hiding? Yeah, we are yeah. asking on behalf of not only did you get asked by the mother ship. Or the mother load, but you're getting asked by the Katie Helper show with Esha here too. So that's a lot of big players asking you to to, to for response. Yeah, um, yeah I think they'll prob they probably have some sort of, you know, maybe they have uh, some system where they hook someone up with sensors and then they get a sense of like what's actually being worked on or exerted. Maybe they just have simulations they're able to do that. They have all sorts of ways they'd be able to collect base data on like what muscle groups are being used. Mm -hmm. And they know based on like, you know, they've been covering up their safety violations for years. So they have a pretty good idea also of like what type of work causes what type of injury. So that together, I think will give them a good idea of how to use the algorithm to be like, okay, don't let them do this work three days in a row. Don't let them do this work 20 hours in a row. Or if they have these combination of factors, don't allow them to do the work for this amount of time or in this sort of situation. Yeah, you wrote, um, the pace and intensity of work in Amazon's warehouse is notorious and injuries are disturbingly common. In his last letter to shareholders as CEO posted on Thursday, founder and incoming executive chairman Jeff Bezos offered a solution that seemed to stretch the definition of micromanagement. Was that stretch intentional, Ed? Was that a pun? Yeah, we like puns All right. motherboard. Algorithmically shuffling workers around the warehouse based on which isolated muscle tendon group they're repetitively grinding. Despite what we, again, this is the second story tonight where I'm like, are we sure this is true? <laughs> Despite what we've accomplished, it's clear to me that we need a better vision for our employees' success. We have always, Be Bezos wrote, we have always wanted to be 
Earth's most customer-centric company. We Customer. won't change that, but I am committing us to an addition. We are going to be Earth's best employer and Earth's safest place to work. Bezos claims that he doesn't take comfort in the recent defeat of a union drive in Bessemer, Alabama, <laughs> warehouse. Well, it's kidding. You know, it's kidding. We need to do a better job for our employees. End quote. To that end, Bezos claims Amazon will be pursuing a host of initiatives centered around improving safety conditions at its warehouses. One program seems to capitalize on Amazon's surveillance dragnet inside warehouses that already target workers, now being used to minimize the grueling repetitive motions that lead to a significant amount of injuries, specifically musculoskeletal disorders or MSD. And I can hear Ed's cats are not okay with this. They're <laughs> pawing, they are pawing um, their... Uh, Objections. Furthermore, Bezos claims that this micro level algorithmic management of workers' bodies will be central to the company's strategy going forward. Which is well, slavery? Yeah. 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 We're developing new automated staffing schedules that use sophisticated algorithms to rotate employees among jobs that use different muscle tendon groups That's to cycle. decrease repetitive motion and help protect employees from MSD risks. This new technology is central to a job rotation program that we're rolling out throughout 2021. Amazon did not respond to a request for comment asking for more details about the program. Bezos's letter in general paints a rosy picture of Amazon's past and future. Another initiative Bezos mentions working well was already rolled out in 2020 and consists of the company coaching small groups of employees on body mechanics, proactive wellness, and safety. Bezos added that while the primary goal is reducing warehouse injuries, it also aims to have a positive, to quote, have a positive impact on regular day-to-day activities outside of work, end quote. Oh my gosh. This program seems to fit in the general trend of tech companies seeking yet more complicated solutions to the problem of overwork without addressing the underlying issues. It resemble issue. It resembles, for example, a coaching system condemned by uh, Austin-based Facebook content moderator contracted through Accenture. In an internal note, they laid out how the coaches made little difference when pitted against a system that had every incentive to keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Although the wellness coaches, in my experience, are excellent at their jobs, the attitude taken by much of leadership is a huge impediment to maintaining mental well-being. Many managers seem to be under the impression that a brain is basically a machine that can be maintained Mm -hmm. in a straightforward way. If you see something that upsets you, you should be able to deal with it by stepping away and doing a breathing exercise. If the problem is really bad, you can talk to a wellness coach. End quote. Um, who was that quoting? Sorry, I missed. Uh, I was quoting a fa- uh, content moderator contracted through Accenture. Um, okay, got it. And they're from, uh, they're working at Amazon? No, but they have a similar situation. Similar, they have yeah. like wellness coaches as well. Okay. Well, Sim- now, oh, sorry. Similarly, oh, sorry. Similarly, Bezos's letter laments the inevitable effects of overwork, imposes complicated solutions while never acknowledging obvious fixes such as slowing the pace of work. Amazon safety problems are the flip side of its high productivity. We have same day, next day, and two day shipping because warehouse workers and delivery drivers are pushed to risk their bodies or risk losing their jobs. Wow. Yeah. From wow, um, there was a lady. Um, her name is Emily something, and she wrote a book. She went undercover where she wrote like a, a book about how these Amazon employees were like getting all these like repetitive stress injuries, and they had to walk like eleven miles a day, and all the cycles. I can't. Emily, her name is Emily, and I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I like that it's uh, inevitable. Deep undercover, I think. Is that the one? Maybe. Is that it? Uh, yeah, on the clock. No, the book is called. On, I, I found it. Okay, the book is called On the Clock. Her name is Emily Gundelsberg. Oh, that's the reference. <laughs> I should know that since that's the um the reference for a column for the column that we have. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Um, but. Grit, just grit. You gotta have more grit. That's what this training is all about. That's what you should have. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is this the solution to all of this? Uh, socialism. Um, <laughs> Lenin, no, honestly, Lenin actually wrote about this. It's called Taylor System. Yes. Uh, yeah, it just it's called the man. Uh, he called it the. Uh, this was in 1914. So, if anything, the algorithms gotten worse and worse. It's like it's called man's enslave. He he called it man's enslavement by the machine, like by uh, as in literally like machines like control what. And so, that's the same system that Amazon uses, but it's used by algorithms and it's like a lot like just a lot like uh, it just goes a lot um on steroids 
Yeah, you know, and it's also interesting that, you know, Lenin, also, you know, Marx or, you know, even our capitalist friend or pre-capitalist friend Adam Smith would talk about how, you know, the way that labor is divided or division of labor ends up creating like really odious consequences like, you know, dehumanizing every person who becomes a cog in some part of a production line. And that was the explicit goal of Taylorism that ends up becoming the explicit goal of these algorithmic management systems in which you are shuffled around, not because that's going to be best for society. you or for society. It's really because it's going to be best for the labor, for the company to avoid labor conditions at a, a certain level, right? Like it's, it's the, the minimal amount of effort to get the maximum amount of benefit. And it's been designed that way and really like there's nothing they don't I, I mean like I've seen and then I wonder like what is it in like other countries it's probably even worse than Amazon God knows what they're doing in other countries yeah I mean like Nestle has slavery right? you know Nestle yeah. uses slavery oh my god uh, did you see like part. Obama's guy with the IG oh my god what uh, is this? Who has slavery? Sorry. Oh, okay. So uh, Nestle had chocolate oh. slaves. Oh, Nestle, Nestle. Yeah. Wait, wait. wait. Uh, earlier this year, um, Obama's guy. Um, uh, last year, um, uh, I forgot Which what. what uh, his uh, solicitor general, I believe. And uh, Neil something Neil. Yeah, uh, Neil Atio or Neil Katio or something like that. Okay, yeah, he basically argued like his defense about why you shouldn't let like why Nestle shouldn't face the consequences was like the IG Farben case, and it was even like Roberts and um even the even Gorsuch was like okay, you just mentioned IG Farben, so I can't rule for you guys. You guys like me. it was horrific. Neil yeah, and he said someone has to do it. He said that uh, someone has to defend the slavers. Um, hold on, hold on. Let's let's right. <laughs> this is in the Supreme Court. Yeah. What's his name? Right. Neil? How, how do you spell his name? It's K A T Y A L, I believe. Okay. Um, okay. Yes, I found it. I'm prominent. as the Supreme. Here, I found it. Um, it's so weird that they don't even get that you're not supposed to like talk, point to algorithms as if they're like a good thing. Yeah. Um, but this is it. And this guy um, is Obama's guy. Um, and he's actually, he literally, like, I listen, I had to listen to it to make sure. Because um, he's a even, well-respected lawyer. He's one of the most no, well-respected lawyers. It was that IG Farben. He mentioned the Zyklon B as why, like, Can as an example. Can you tell people what that is, by the way? So oh, that's can... the gas chamber. They, I mean, that's the medicine they use. Not the medicine, but the chemical they use in the yeah, gas yeah. chambers for the Holocaust. Um but yeah, during the Supreme Court case, it was um, it, it was decided it was argued, but not yet decided, I think. So an alien tort statute is that if um, some U.S. actor uh, goes abroad and uh, commits genocide or something, the people right. who are victims can come and sue in U.S. court because it's kind of technically the U.S. are actor. And basically the the Nestle was like claiming that it, or whoever, whatever conglomerate Neil Katyal was representing were claiming that they were exempt from it for God knows why. Um, but yeah, during that argument, he definitely brought up, um, would place, his argument was essentially would place U.S. farms at a competitive disadvantage. <laughs> and um, for support, he put, and he said that um, international community does not support holding corporations responsible for violations of international law. And what he cited was the Zyklon B case that was apparently like as in suing Bayer or their whatever they used to be for providing that Zyklon B. And that was is like he was saying that because they were kind of let out, like there is no international norm against holding yeah. company. And it was crazy, but he's Obama's guy. So now I don't know what to say. Even Clarence Thomas was like even Gorsuch could not actually answer like he was like do you think we should throw out these child slaves it was just like yeah so yeah there's a really interesting exchange they had where they're like there's slave <laughs> there's like slavery going on and they're like no i mean he no he's like yeah but you know it's like they're not legally bound they're not bound by any legal you know law or by any legal framework to That's, answer to the yeah. fact that they're doing the slavery and he's like but there's okay. you're saying that they should be exempt from slavery. I think Clarence Thomas had like a few examples and Neil did like some dancing with him before they backed off. Yeah, it was wild. And 
ultimately, like if a country is dysfunctional, I forget, I believe this may have been in Congo or Ivory Coast, I can't remember, but their government is like, obviously the corporation just rules like in whatever country it is. So it seems like they were using the dysfunctionality of the country as a shield to be not held accountable. Yeah, of course, right. I mean, that's, that's, they operate in places where they can, you know, get away with this stuff. It was Nestle and Cargo. That's okay, Cargill. Was. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, because that other one was bothering me too. There are two cases, and I think he was involved in both of them. Yes, he was definitely involved in both. And if so, oh, but then isn't there like an Obama guy in Amazon also? Oh, yeah. Um, Jay Carney. He's the. Oh, yeah, the worst. Operations, yeah. Yeah. And, and so it, it just like shows you. And if you look at like what Obama did, I mean, it shows you like their priorities and they're just as puppety as everyone else. And so, yeah. <laughs> Did you see this? You see this super chat? What? B billions of brood X cicada oh, yeah. insects emerging for mating calls first time in 17 <laughs> years, 15 states plus Washington, D.C. You know what this means? We got a whole new Congress and Senate wing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Phantom Responds, a great commentary. Oh. <laughs> great comment. I really like that. That's good. Yeah. That's the that's the stuff we want to see. None of the trolling. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. also I'm drinking water, by the way. I admit when I'm drinking wine, but I'm just drinking water. Again, I shouldn't be feeding the trolls, but I had to Yeah. Say that. Yeah, sorry for that sidebar. Just Oh no, it's good. I highlighted it. It's a good quote. I like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm incapable of not so I'm just not even looking at the comment section. No, yeah, I'm on no, the I'm too. on the studio screen. I like just came back from trying to read the argument that Neil Katyal was giving. So, what what did he say in the Cargill case? He said, "Look, we all agree that the claims are horrific, uh -huh. but that the companies were merely an afterthought, and that the companies, <laughs> you know, in the complaint, it, it alleged that you know it only alleged that the companies had made the decisions in the United States and knew about child slavery in Ivory Coast, and so the justices should throw out the case. One because you know." The, the tort doesn't apply to U.S. corporations, but also it does not apply when um, the conduct at the heart of the case occurred outside the United States. Okay. Yeah, nonsense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally cool. nonsense. I mean, that's a word salad on top of a word salad. It's, I'm, I was reading it, and I was like, am I, like, is there a word missing here? Am right. I, why am I not understanding what I <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, wow. But have these people gotten more ghoulish or have we gotten more experienced with their ghoulishness? That's what I can't tell. You mean, have we like been, been, have been more exposed or have they yeah. gotten more? Yeah. What is it? Like, what do you think? I think it's a mix, you know, part of it is, you know, uh, things are getting worse mm -hmm. and it's becoming harder. I think like as you stand, as we are standing or if you're an observer, it gets harder and harder to reconcile like how worse things are getting with like, same old defenses or even more depraved defenses of the status quo okay. on the other hand as things disintegrate the defenses get more desperate right ah right here's a good question where to research which chocolate comes from enslaved agricultural workers i'm just gonna say assume all of it comes from it <laughs> yeah yeah wow um, Oh, I'm selling that shelf. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad face. Because someone needs to answer. Everything in this room shelf. is being sold because I'm moving in three days. Where so are you going? I'm going to New York. Oh, cool. Ooh. We should make that all three of us. Yeah, I'm going to be in a. I just found out is that Prospect Park is not actually a neighborhood. That's just the name of the park. But I'm. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. I've been telling people that for for weeks. Are you going to be in Brooklyn? Yeah, I'm going to be in Brooklyn. I'm going to be uh, in Crown Heights on the very edge of the park. But, oh, that's where, uh, okay, that's where another friend of, mutual friend of Katie's and I's live. Oh, perfect. Yeah, everyone, it sounds like pretty much everyone's around there. I used to live in Crown Heights. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Mm -hmm. You did use yeah. I've been trying not to give out people's addresses. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <don't>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I yeah. I won't, I won't, I won't. I won't like tweet out my uh, my address, but I feel like I can say the neighborhood because it's yeah yeah of course <laughs> yeah. And white chocolate, by the way, is um, not chocolate. It's also not good. What is white chocolate? 
I don't even know, but it's terrible. Oh, pistachio wars. Yeah, I gotta get Yasha Levine. Oh on yeah, the show. Yasha's really good with the pistachio. Yeah. It's great. The Saudis are also buying it. It's creating. It's a creepy thing. Oh, you should read his blog. Deal with this. Yeah, he's great. I gotta have him. I keep asking him to come on. Well, okay, what? Uh, what is child. the deal? Wait, what's the deal with um? Oh, I saw like uh, the ADL tweeted that like Houthis are really anti-Semitic and they've killed Jews. And I don't know Why? anything about that. No, they have not. Like, I'm like, okay, now do Saudis. Yeah. Now do Saudi Arabia. They like, have what the hell? That's just making stuff up in the middle of that. So like, that, that's literally so making stuff much, up. Yeah. And um, they are Shias. It's like a completely different um, really, it's. I mean, they're the ideological enemy of the Saudis, so yeah, that's totally ama- that's just Saudi propaganda. Like they'll just say anything to smear them. The ADL will do it too. Uh, so is white chocolate from cows kept in caves? No, I don't what think is, so. Wait, how do you make white chocolate? I mean, does anyone know? Actually, I don't know, but I know it's not actually chocolate. I know because... at some point they're child slaves. I just don't know. Right, they're always thrown in the mix. <laughs> just a question of uh, that doesn't affect the color of the the product. Right. Though. But, Might, but probably doesn't. Yeah. Oh, okay. God, yeah. White chalk, according to some Google website that I hit Google, it said white chocolate is also a way to use up extra cocoa butter that is extracted from the cocoa bean. So that it's must be it. it. But That's I thought gross. it wasn't. Yeah. It's terror. It's just not that good. I mean, have you ever been like, you I'm know? glad this is a white chocolate thing I instead of. I love white chocolate. I you love do? all chocolate. Seriously? I love all chocolate. I really love all chocolate. I have a horrible sweet tooth. I'm addicted sugar i love it i will seek it out crave it i love it that's great if it's sweet i'll eat it yeah but i mean yeah okay thank you brad brad can you write this in the brad writes these really great behind like private messages and then i see them because i'm not supposed to have those hidden and they're very valuable but i can't carry that i can't carry these messages i gotta just write in the comments and apparently technically white chocolate isn't chocolate Okay. But I can't verify the source, much like chocolate, but okay, I think so it's true. It seems like, um, according to the World Bank's website, um, majority of the exports of chocolates come from these four country, five countries, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Cameroon, and Ecuador. Yeah, that sounds... So it's definitely, nine, nine, and, and, and the majority of the places they're going is like Germany, Netherlands, Switzerland. So... It's they're totally using slaves. Like, yeah. No question about it. They they literally do. Have, they have plantations where they just they, you know, at, at, in mass. Uh, I think I saw someone. Maybe oh, wow. I'm kind of hoping this is trolling or not. But someone was kind of. I feel like someone was maybe low key saying slave, like low key defending slavery in this chat. How and was that? I don't know. I saw. I'm. I'm like putting it together. What did they write? It's like the issue. Like, what if we get sla- rid of slavery? Then what? So then we, then we get rid of slavery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. What That's is it? Like, it's a slippery slope from getting rid of slavery to what? Getting rid of general ex- more paid exploitation. What if we got rid of one of the most evil institutions yeah. that has plagued humanity from the beginning yeah. of recorded history? Yeah, we party is what someone said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just, uh, that's a weird, you ever they, encounter the, oh, but Africans had slaves too. Do you ever oh, encounter that? Uh, yes, that's, uh, that's a really said. stupid one. Okay, that's so stupid because it, it's A, assumes that like there were all one ethnicity and they don't realize right. that when you, de- like, okay, when you destabilize, like basically what happened is that the gold from the new world went in and flooded uh, Europe. So Africans could not sell anything besides their people. Like that was the only thing that was left. And then what happened is that it just like got rid of like 2 million people and destabilized entire kingdom. So what happened is that like people couldn't even trust their neighbors because they would like the, the money was so good that you're like they would kidnap their neighbors. And that's just all because so that the mills in Manchester, England could get um their supply of cotton. And that's it. That was the beginning of capitalism is basically that. Yeah. That's yeah, it's also like such a disingenuous thing because it's like even then, okay. you know, none of the the trade or African slave trade in no way, shape or form compares to the Atlantic slave trade and what Atlantic. European countries were doing. Atlantic. Right? Uh, or, oh, you mean oh, within Africa as opposed to transatlantic? Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, in, in within Africa, within the continent of Africa versus like going 
like what the Europeans were facilitating and organizing. And that was horrific. You know, oh, yeah. far outstrips every, almost every single other slave trade in barbarity, in the sheer dehumanization. Well, of it's because it was all literally to help like British cotton. Uh, basically, it was the cotton mills in England that just needed more and more cotton. And that's how oh. we had America, basically. Yeah, it's horrible. It's lovely. Yeah, uh, Gerald Horn just wrote this book. I have to read. It was about oh, Gerald. Gerald yeah. Horn. I have two of his yeah, books. I love on him. White. Uh, White. Yeah, he just sent me White Supremacy. Um, uh, confronted. It's like wait. I've, he wrote another one because he. I'm. I'm still catching yeah. up with the bittersweet. Oh, I, I bitter have to read. Not, he, what is yeah, it? Bittersweet, bittersweet harvest. It's no, it's the not just bittersweet harvest. It's, it's the bittersweet science. Science. Bittersweet oh. science. It's about boxing. It's about boxing. In, I know. I have it. it, and I have to have him. It's about boxing all over. It's here yeah. also. The well, one I have to read is about the counter revolution of 1776. Oh, oh my god, I already yeah, had him yeah. on. It's to my favorite yeah. book. It's good. I gotta ever. do. A, I love gotta it. do a book club, guys. Yeah. I'm doing. The, yeah, let's do a book club. Yeah, yeah. but hey, the counter and and you should also read his newer one, which is the dawning of the apocalypse. Yeah, oh, that's okay. where he his thesis is that um the U the revolution the U S revolution. Was right, was fought basically over slavery. Well, I mean, it's not a thesis. It's literally on the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> Well, yeah, but that it was the reason. I mean, the inter whether or not you think he's right, like the interpretation is that that was the primary yeah. motivation. Like our mythology is that, that there's two bits, right? Okay, that that was that in the mix, right? Like as they opposed, were, yeah. They were crying about also not, the king did not want to deal with like a headache between France and Spain, so they had for he had forbidden these like uh, losers from like going west of the Mississippi, <laughs> and they were also in the, on the Declaration of Independence. They were like crying. They were like, "Oh my God, I need to do more genocide." <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's also another thing. I mean, it is really interesting to see how far even like the attempts to reevaluate the American Revolution go. Mm -hmm. And Gerald Horne's book looks really, I'm really excited it. for that. But before then, like the discussions of like trying to reckon with, um, you know, America's founding or past felt like they wouldn't. They, I feel like there's a conclusion that comes immediately from like, oh, it's about slavery, right? I mean, it's if it's. Right. But that instead it becomes like, oh, no, like if it's about slavery, then we just need to think about some political solutions like reparations, as opposed to like thinking like through what maybe land back looks like. Right. Or repatriation, well, you know, on all the other that, shit that comes out of the, the mass amount of genocide. And slavery. Well, on top of that, James Madison literally wrote the purpose of our government is to protect those with property from those who didn't have from those without like i yeah, have, I have stop land reform right no 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 um property back then were um people oh yeah i mean yeah like the, yeah people of course it's slavery but all, yeah i mean I, in addition to like what he's talking about the convention yeah. yeah exactly and so there is like no part of the government the government is functioning exactly as the original founders right. intended and people think it's a malfunctioning and i think that's right. the main takeaway it's not a it's not a bug it's a feature yeah, there's um, one of my favorite pieces came out recently. It's just so, uh, you know, long essay by Asida Noanevu about um, the need to just uh, get rid of the Constitution. You know, like mm -hmm. the Constitution oh, I agree. is you should, the right, largest, we start it. Yeah, you know, it is like it is the it is our enemy. It is our enemy to like a dem democratic, you know, social order. If you're interested in democracy, if you're interested in reforms, if you're interested in like, you know, any real uh, political objective, the Constitution is your enemy because it it's forged to prevent or slow down progress. Right. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's kind of weird because um, I was um, talking to this uh, author. Um, he used to be a farmer, and he's actually did this, like, really deep dive on the history of uh, what property is. And until the Industrial Revolution, there was no such thing as, like, whatever we see as, like, the wooden fence property at all. So it's a very new thing, and we've been taught that it's a permanent there's a permanence in it that does not yeah. happen it to be that way mm, yeah. yeah i mean that yeah that's part of the magic right you know things that get made in like the moment to justify some new relation mm -hmm. capitalists just never fucking leave right, <laughs> right. Yeah. you know what's interesting is the way certain leftists like from the communist party and like in the 30s to you know like bernie sanders like and to, you know, Howard Zinn in between and many other people. But there is this interesting, like, 
rehabilitation or like subversive rehabilitation, reimagining, re-envisioning of like the founder's vision. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like I don't know. If, like, okay. So Can like the like Abraham Lincoln Brigade. Abraham <laughs> Abraham the Abraham Lincoln Brigades, right? We're called the Abraham Lincoln Brigades, the communists called their 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 the um, brigade in the war? Spanish War, yeah. And they're and like Paul Robeson saying Ballad of the Americas, you know, sure. and super like we hold these truths to be self-evident. And it's just an interesting like I remember Gerald Hoard saying to Aaron Mate, he like kind of made fun of Harrods Inn. And I wasn't I wasn't offended. I was like, oh yeah, wow. But it is an interest is that just like I wonder if there's any political use for that. No. Because well, we I mean it failed we, last it, time. We got Ronald Reagan. We got every all the fascism back. So Well, what <laughs> failed? What do you mean? What failed? Um, well, okay, so the, we got the red purchase. Um, basically, every little progress people made in the 1930s was all. Oh, you're rolled saying back. that, like, the, I'm not, I'm not, you're saying, like, that communist experiment failed. Yes, that strategy failed. And that's, just, I, I think that's like, you're being dishonest to people. Yeah. And also, the thing is that what people don't realize is that um, the government of America is the problem because of how well it is designed to be anti democ as I mean how many protests like people do the all these protests and sometimes I wonder like y y nothing's happening here you guys need to regroup and do something different because literally like there's like it's about as unresponsive as it can get and so people need to kind of I, I just don't believe in glorifying the founders I'm more interested in like the the history of that on the left but. I think they were just capitulating. Like, I think it's a capitulation and not fully recognizing, like, all the, um, it, 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 it was a way to dull the, I don't know. It, it, yeah. it, it, it I just don't, didn't also, see how it. do we reach, don't we have to reach some people that, like, I don't I know. Think, yeah. I, I'm sure, to... you know, like, some people who have tried that experiment, their goals, like, Americans are pretty nationalistic or patriotic in general, because it's beaten into them. Maybe appealing to that in some way works. It doesn't, but I think that that's like- That the, dulls the class consciousness because you're putting right. everyone as a group uh, into one countryman, right. when Americans need to be thinking about as- No, I agree. Corporation. So that's why I don't see it. I no. agree. Yeah, you know, I think, and that's the bind, right? You know, in the United States where it's like particularly, you know, like a class rule society and dominated by like the ECR. Yeah, corporations people. and capitalists that it's it's been harder i guess to develop the sort of consciousness that would make it easier for oh, well, a left project to speak for hold people. on on top of it they have genetically engineered like not genetically but socially engineered their population in that a lot of times immigrants were both used as like an anti-unionization effort and then in the 1930s a lot of them who were unionizing were purged so then in the right. 1950s we actually like people think it's a communist ban but what they right. had was um they had to pop all these countries on the eastern Bloc had a popular front so basically anyone who was not a fascist would join this unity ticket in order to defeat the fascists so in the 1950s it was a ban of anyone who's not a fascist and um there's like a lot um um, hold on. I, I have. Oh, a, sorry, I'll tell, I'll tell you about that after. Yeah. There's a link there. Um, yeah. Brad can send it to you guys. Um, I have and, it. Yeah. Yeah. And so after the. Where, where was I? Oh, yeah. After. And, and so it has. So it's not an organic population in that the ruling class gets to control who gets to be in the country and who gets to not be in the country. And I think that has a big problem and uh, of developing any class consciousness because of like. How many immigrants do we have who are probably like low wage workers? Like two million, five million? I don't know. How, how many do you think we have? No yeah. idea. Yeah, I guess this, this is good as mine. I have like no two, idea. Let's just say two million. That is a huge population that can actually, like, if they, but they get to kick them out and use the police state. Them and a meat company about two years ago, even last year, did a mass deportation as a way of um, scabbing, and so. Really, the fact that they can control who comes in really affects all class consciousness in the country, I think. Yeah. Well, by the way, I would just like to give a shout out to some total dicks in the chat. And I know I shouldn't recognize you. You're just condescending. Someone was like, I'm more interested in the history of the left, but that would require study. 
We're having a nuanced conversation. Also, all the other people are like, the founders were bad. I don't think the founders were angelic. I mean, we're having a discussion about, A, how to frame them. B, what to do with the ideas that were good. Maybe they were hypocritical. Um, I have no attachment to this. I was raised by people who, like, didn't have any affection for any of this bullshit. Yeah. So people just, I don't know why I'm responding to them. It's just so annoying. I hate when people think they're being smart and they're condescending to someone, but they actually don't get the discussion that's happening. No, and, you just gotta, you, just yeah. gotta let them, you know, do the but, but I think the yeah. topic is whether but, Patriots but is no, a consciousness or not. And wait, but also good. we should have, um, I should have Christian Parenti, Radical Hamilton, because people keep talking about Michael Parenti and Christian has a, a <laughs> uh, an interesting critique. And then don't tell me what to focus on people in the chat. Or thank you. Oh, you know what? Someone said thank you. I know it, but I it's true. I'm I'm sorry. But I think that that's a uh, yeah, the self righteous idiots. That's what they are. Um, yeah, why y'all gotta set my queen? Ocean transistor says, good question. Now that's a chat I'll read. But yeah, you little yeah. sure broke some brains here. What does that mean? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, but, well, like what I notice is that yeah, um, a lot of. There's another thing is that Americans, uh, there has been no analytical tool to uh, think of like anything in the geopolitical uh, arena. For example, um, maybe like your, uh, so there's, um, they don't understand, imper like they, they don't understand manufacturing, imperialism, farming, even like what, what it is like to like have oxen like in third world countries and how like, like just like basic things and it's like we need to like a, I don't even know where to start because it's so um, basic. one of the reasons why Brzezinski was like really interesting for me at first was because in a lot of the later strategic texts where he's lamenting the missed opportunity after the Soviet Union fell, um, he talks about how like one of the big difficulties of like using the American empire and being a permanent empire is that Americans just don't know anything about like the world in general. And that is also a consequence of like decisions planners made a long time ago to and have encouraged because it's in their interest to not have like a population yeah. that is particularly mobilized or not atomized or well, you know, and, and one way or other capable of like undermining how operations are going in the Imperial core, right? And so his, you know, he had a book, I think it was called, um, it, was, uh, it was the book he wrote with uh, Scrocroft um, and they were like, you know, look, maybe there's a path forward where like if you improve education of Americans for a narrow sliver, you can recreate like a, a pretty uh, efficient like diplomatic course so that we can have better, more robust geopolitical analysis and, sh and other shit bring ideas like that, which work for the empire and but work for developing their consciousness, but not like the general population. So. Oh, absolutely. And. Like I said, there is no tool like they, even the basics are just not uh, like they don't even have the right framework to even look at two things and say, are they similar? Or are they different? Do I need to evaluate the truth of that? Can the truth? How would I evaluate the truth of this? And like often like these things just don't occur to them. And uh, yeah, um, like even hypothesis testing or something like that. Well, I mean, parts of living in the greatest country in the world. Am I yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, if somebody really thought, uh, uh, I don't know, somebody was like, oh, you can't um, actually figure out, like, who was purged in the group. I was like, no, these are all public records. You can actually go down, download it, and make a spreadsheet of every single person who was purged between 1938 and 1940 in Moscow. And, uh, like, you can make a list and figure out what. Uh, but to most Americans, this is, like, just, like, a vague thing that it can never be solved. But it well, is I a very... Mean solvable problem i mean part of that is also just like there's a lot of energy spent in this country in telling people that like that sort of stuff is too complex right a lot right. of energy goes into convincing people that like politics is like equivalent of scrying chicken bones and they can't <laughs> really understand right it, you know? that, not, yeah there's or that it would be nice it would be mm -hmm. like that, that's some, it's like a technocracy argument right where it's like we would love to have these things but we just can't of course, well, that's because that's they haven't even tried to, crazy. I know, they have, but they haven't even tried to figure out why we can't have it, how we can't have it, and even, like, think of a solution. Like, it's very, um, just because they seem to always, oh, CNN does this, all, like, where they're, like, I call this truth laundering, where it's something like um, um, Putin says, uh, Putin claims sky is blue, and, mm -hmm. like, they'll take an absolute truth, and so, but they'll act like, you can like 
these two things, there's no way you can evaluate the truth of it, but you can actually evaluate 90% of these things that they act like they can't evaluate, for example. And yeah. Oh, by like saying like it's being laundered through a questionable source. So now it's something that might be true is not true any longer. Exactly. No, I'm, I'm saying like, but the idea is when you read these articles, you can actually like it's the way CNN does it. Like you can actually evaluate every statement. You don't even have to go that far into it to evaluate it. You just have to read carefully. But the fact that they write this article in this kind of point of view is a way where even they think that these are subjective things that cannot be objectively tested. And a lot more things, we have so much data and that's what's very weird to me. Yeah, you know, that's, I think that's something, you know, Parenti, you know, Chomsky. Which one, Michael? Uh, yeah, um, you know, did well in documenting. I mean, like you can literally, like, we live in a free country, right? We live in the freest country in the world. A lot of <laughs> government records are open. You can read what all these people yeah. thought when they were trying to plan um, how anything. to create like a long last anything, really. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, how are they going to try to organize like an alliance with the House of Saud so that they would have dominant control over access to oil resources? How are they going to control <laughs> and contain, you know, uh, Indochina so that they would be preserved as like an export platform instead of like a you know, possible base for like a competitor mm -hmm. in that region. How are they going to contain the Soviet Union? How are they going to contain and like you know communism in Italy? How are they going to contain it in Germany? You know, like all this stuff is on those depart. Like you can go right now yes. to the White House records or the I Department go. of State records and I, read I do it. that all the time. Like yeah. I I read the fruits and then it's like half the time it's like okay. Why? It's like, no, half the time I'm like surprised that these are public records and people are still arguing with me. I'm like, no, like literally look, the State Department admits. But that's it. also the thing. It's like, it's, there's all this stuff is like really public and accessible, but in this, you know, everyone is atomized. Everyone is like depoliticized. Everyone is not like, they're not large scale political organizations that can educate people or radicalize people or socialize them. Your main avenue of political activity for most people is like, the electoral party that they vote for, which is like a team, you know, not mm -hmm. actually a political organization or like community stuff. Right. And so that prevents people right out the bat from not having like any coherent worldview or having a coherent like way of taking information and being like, okay, let me like analyze it or double check it. That's actually why I started Sundays with Lenin, because one thing Lenin can do is analyze every the heck out of every and troll people. He also has like a troll. You know that he has a trolling guy. Did Lenin control people from beyond the grave. Yeah, I, I have. Lenin marks were good. They were really no, actually, good. actually, like I, I started <laughs> Lenin tweets. Um, uh, and I have uh, uh, so far gotten into Lenin's like um, basically I only I've known that I haven't, I haven't had to actually change many quotes from him. Oh and yeah, that's cool. But um, yeah, no, I'm saying like he can. He, he also oh, has yeah. a trolling guide called how to write a polemic or something like them where if you can find it <laughs> but well, you the, have lenin tweet underscore tweets is that still active yeah it's always active okay yeah um and so, so um that's why i started it because i was like hoping like if we go through like enough of like somebody like bringing out all the data and explaining okay this is how capitalism developed and right. blah, blah blah like he has a lot of data and he processes it well like I went like I was hoping that would like make people a little bit more political conscious and like they maybe get a little suspicious when we see another pro democracy activist who's um who's the most Guaido said something weird yesterday I forgot what it was but it was so bizarre Guaido always says something weird yeah. he's such a weird loser and, <laughs> like he's the fake president of Venezuela by no, the way. He he said something about reforming some TV station. And it's like, you're, you're pretending to be president. Stop tweeting. <laughs> oh, is he still like president in exile or whatever? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it was so weird. Like, and so I was like hoping that it would like, people would just be a little more skeptical. And I do have some things about certain, <clears throat> not, not, not in a certain leftist news organizations that we're not going to name, but they've literally like, laundered every like they haven't even like read these articles and they've literally mm -hmm. laundered every single thing like they so uh, i'm like why even have a leftist if your organization we're going to be just like 100 percent with the state department 100 percent yeah time. you gotta you gotta mix it up a little bit i guess i'm laundering them i'm doing i'm, I'm doing bad stuff because i'm i'm helping sanitize them no um, you're, you're doing great stuff like i'm just I, saying that 
a lot of these like leftist organizations like, oh uh, oh you weren't talking about democracy now okay sorry well i, I kind of was but um, oh, yeah. somebody else um I, I was talking about somebody more irritating than democracy now okay you can tell me that i think i know who you're talking about maybe but they, yeah, they interviewed Sorry, no, NATO, no. Madeleine Albright, oh, okay. and, and, and yeah. they also interviewed like this, like total, like this Lithuanian um, foreign minister from like the quasi fascist party. Yeah, you guys. By the way, Raúl Castro stepped down, so he I want to give him a a shout out. Shout out! Thank oh. you, Raúl. It must have been hard living in Fidel's shadow because he... Fidel, like, yeah, Me seriously. Siempre. No, no, that's che. Hasta siempre. Hasta che. la victoria siempre. Okay, that's true. Yeah. Um, Which is so funny. Do you guys remember when Bill de Blasio quoted Che at a debate in Miami? Mm, Vaguely. (laughs) Very vaguely. Yeah. That was amazing. That was like a platitude. And um, and he even walked it back for the Cusanos. Well, I mean, honestly, like. Come on. You don't please the Cusanos. You tell them to go screw themselves. (laughs) Not if you're running for fucking president. I mean, I like. You don't need the Cusano vote for the presidency. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> also, we, can, we can lose Florida from now on. Yeah, it's we, fine. We yeah. Also, yeah, we, though, you know that his wife is not only was she, she used to be a lesbian. Allegedly. Fine. No, not allegedly. So you think he convert- her act? No, 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 she no. Converted, no. Her, uh, converted her. Bill de Blasio converted her. But also, is that even possible? Be, she used to be, she was part of the Combahee River Collective, like not a main player. Yeah. Look! Look it up, guys. Is, it's amazing. Is it possible to convert people like that? I thought it was your orientation. Have you like... listened to Ani DeFranco? Oh my God. Okay, whatever. She was in the collective. Yeah, look it up. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I know. I'm not saying like she. People can identify whoever they want. People, but she says that she was a le- like. I don't think she's like. I've always been queer. I think she actually says like she was a lesbian, and then she met Bill. Weird. Um. Okay. Well, happy. also, let me just call, I'm now, right? call someone out. By the way, this is time for Katie calls out. Katie's Ooh. call out. I'm going to call it a guy from the LA Times who wrote a piece about K Hive. Okay. It's almost like a um, what's it called when you catch and capture, uh, cap- capture and kill or whatever. He wrote a piece about K Hive. He spoke to me. He spoke to Brianna Dre Gray. Uh huh. He didn't quote me, which I'm fine with. I just want to say something, guys. Mm-hmm. I told him, "Am I? Is this? I can say this, right? It's not. I'm not. He's not. It's what I said is not off the record, right? I can share it with whomever. Mm-hmm. I wasn't writing the piece. I told him to speak to Walker Bragman mm-hmm. multiple times. You mm-hmm. know what? I'm gonna make sure. Let's pause this. I'll get back to you. I gotta do. He. I gotta make sure that Walker didn't diss him. All I'm saying is that there was a shitty. Okay, let me take that back. All I'm saying is that. People should read this article at the Gray Zone if they want to know about K-Hive. Because there were some interesting oversights in the LA Times piece about it. So I'm just going to put in here. Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's all. We're going to get back to it. So this is not Katie's call-outs. This is like Katie maybe call-out. Um, yeah, that's the new K-Hive piece in the Gray Zone. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And I may have to do one of my things where I read a bunch of, you know, I may do that, have to do that thing where I read a bunch of tweets like I did with Nira. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, what do you mean, where was Walker? What do you mean, where was Walker? Uh, I'll find out. I don't think Walker was absent. That's my point. We'll find out, though. But yeah. I don't even see the point of this, like, now that the election is over. Like, what's the point of even having K-Hype? Good question. I don't know. Anyone know? To Sarah keep the base in you know, shape, you know, it's a threat. Yeah. You know, it's like a gun pointed at the head of uh, any Bernie bro that wants to step out of line. Yeah. Yeah. I, we always step out of line. This Bernie bro is stepping <laughs> out of line. That's what I should, my memoir should be called. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway. Well, you guys, this was really great. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. And what else are you guys up to? Come back on. Let's do, um, we should do, I'm, I'm going to start doing these. Don't forget Twitch. Let me do my, tw- oh yeah, show us the, the babies. Yeah. I don't even like cats, but they're cute. This is a Nancy. Let me see. Oh, that's so adorable. Are you bringing them to New York? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no way I could not bring them with me. Hey, you these just got are, them, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
That was, a, that was a very big limiting factor in apartment searching, finding a place that was friendly for cats, but it was worth it. We got a really nice one. Kobe is asleep. Um, I think he's asleep. I don't know what he's... He's just chilling over there. Mm -hmm. Let me just see. Yeah, so this is where I'm going to start doing my, um, my self... What's it called? Radical self-care? It's more like, yeah. like reformist self-care. Okay. That's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, and I don't really understand how Twitch works. You pay but, people with like bits or something. Ed can explain it all to me. What's it called again? Yeah. Like you're doing, what's it? Morning, what is it? Morning pages. Okay, I'll figure that out later. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Yeah. It's okay. going to be morning page. It's going to, it's called the, it's called, where's Lisa Mojica? She came up with this idea. She's probably past her bedtime, which is, um, what is it? Uh, more democracy leader because we're drinking a lot of water. Maybe I'll get my dad to do it with me, but yeah, we're going to do. I'll play Minecraft. I have no idea how it, how, uh, it, uh, it's like you have to build a little civilization. So you have, like, I know my friend, my friend does that. She's 13. She, she's my friend's daughter. She's my uh -huh. friend too, but it's, yeah, sounds weird if I say that. Yeah. But, um, she, <laughs> she makes some really nice things, but I can't ever know. I don't ever know what's like real or fake. Everything's fake. Or what's made or what's just like commented on. Yeah. Morning uh -huh. pages from the Julia Cameron book of the artist way. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, you're gonna do it uh, every morning from now on. I don't know. Let's start the week off right, though. We're gonna do it tomorrow morning on Monday. And by the way, when I say morning pages, I mean like ten or eleven. Okay. I'll tweet it out though. Okay. Yeah, and then independent left. Anything I should tell people about the Discord? Oh well, I should tell people to join me. We're not. Oh doing yeah. Sundays with Lennon at one o'clock, and then we also have some podcasts. Um, and um, a newsletter, like we have a, a once a week newsletter, once a week podcast, on and right? yeah, and Substack. But then Sundays with Lennon uh, is on our YouTube and um, all these other platforms that you can get a link to if you go to Streamlabs, uh, which we'll tweet out the link. Oh, cool! By the way, um, oh yeah, and everyone, I should, I hope I get. It's always nice. I need Leslie Lee. He does this thing where he's like, let's see if we can get X number of uh, Patreon supporters for Struggle Session. I'm not going to do that. Too much pressure. Okay, but, so here's the URL if you want to. Uh, yeah. I, I, I gave you the wrong one. Yeah. This okay, you want. Yeah. Bookmark that. Come on Sundays, and you can get to. Yeah. Bookmark what? Sorry. Oh no, I I was gonna get. Okay, I was gonna give a stream labs. That way, people who are have like YouTube, Twitch, whatever, like they can kind of, uh, uh, a just kind of um. I'll, I'll show you. Uh, can. Oh, I see. Just, I see. I'll put it in there. Yeah. Here. Uh, sorry. Put, put the second one, not the first one, because the first one's a little. I don't know if the one that's up currently is correct or not. Hold on. Sure, they're see. both correct. It's just that um, one of them is, uh, uh, um, yeah. That? Mm-hmm. All right, cool, yeah. It has a schedule on it somewhere, if you can go there. Yeah. And I'll fix this one to make it this website a little bit better, too. Great. And Ed, what about you? Um, this Machine Kills pod. You know, oh, you yeah. can find us on What's Twitter. It about? Uh, political Economy and Technology. Uh, oh. We talk about history of tech firms, uh, history of tech concepts, nice, uh, and PR nonsense that they, you know, feed each, uh, everybody. Uh, Luddism, because, you know, we're all Luddites and we're trying to What's push a Luddite? Uh, we believe that technology that does not service people first and foremost mm -hmm. should not exist. And that when you are confronted with systems that hurt people or dehumanize people, you have a moral obligation to break them. Or I, that just sounds reasonable to me. But that's a start. I mean, that comes from the Luddites. Like, yeah, that's what the Luddites were historically. They got like you know uh, stigmatized and you know um, caricatured as just like destroying any sort of progress. When in reality, it was like they were destroy the machines they destroyed had existed for years, but they were now being used you know, by industrialists to replace them. And so they started to destroy them because they were replacing them, not because they were like making labor better because they had made labor better before. Um, yeah. That's um, interesting. Wh uh, what sounds great that someone wrote, uh, oh man, that sounds great. I've been, Chuanan does that sometimes. So I've been creating more of that. What's that? That's, is that the Streamlabs thing? But also make sure, okay, so I was just having, a, I was showing, this is Ed's um, Twitter handle. Also, can we just quickly, I'm doing the Jewish goodbye again, but can we quickly just look at this photo of you, I Ed? It is like see. ridiculous. Hold on. And I'm waiting did you for start, Did you choose your, your um, 
handle before you were a journalist, by the way? Yeah, I did. Okay, hold on. That's uh, neither here nor there. I'm just curious because I like it. But sometimes it must be annoying that it doesn't have your name in it, right? Are you sometimes like, ah? Oh. No, I think I think like now it's like mine. I own it, you know, and so it might as well be my uh, it's my oh, yeah. handle, I guess. I'm, I'm sure like people usually have their handles as their names. I have like a website that has my name, but it's like in progress. I haven't really. Because you're a Luddite, obviously. You're yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, like... Yeah. Um, you're definitely on a list, obviously. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, more. Wait. Um, uh, who did morning pages? Uh, whatchamacallit? Uh, Maria. I don't know where Maria is, actually. I mean, I do. She's, she's, this is later than usual, so we can't, I didn't, I didn't organize it well. Um, where has the other Amari brand is great, but, but where is she? Maria, we'll get her back. Wait a second. Um, what was I going to show? Oh yeah, let me just show a picture of. Hold on. Look at that. That's adorable. How old were you? How cute. Yeah. How old were you? That's three and a half. Oh wow. So cute. And what is that thing you have in your hand? Uh, that was my teddy bear, and then that's oh Big god. Bird. Okay. Oh my god, that is so seven. cute. <laughs> You were so cute. Oh my God. Yeah, my dad was very, my dad took a picture of like almost every moment of my life. That's great. <laughs> and so I was like seven, but we lost all the pictures. So. Oh no. Yeah. What happened? Oh, a storage unit leaked. Uh, water leaked and destroyed the computer where all the records were. Oh um, my God. They didn't digitize them like I'd been saying for a decade and wow. put them on the cloud. So. You can't rest like you try to obviously to get it. Yeah, there's nothing that can be done. I tried everything. That's so terrible. Yeah. I lost my. I told you, Ed, because I saw you tweet about that, and I told you I lost my great grandmother's engagement ring. How? I don't know. It fell off me, and it was like my. Oh, I'm so annoyed. I can't. And whenever I get upset about it, I just have to be zen and be like, I. I mean, I'm a very lucky person. I have my health right. You know, I have my health, and I have friends and everything. Because I just can't. And the worst thing about it is it was when I went out to meet, oh, I was in some, some like Jewish Palestinian dialogue group and I went out to meet like two of them and one of them was like felt conflicted about Gaza and I was like, are you fucking kidding? And then I, I left and then that's like I went, I lost my great grandmother's fucking wow. engagement ring over that. Mm. What the fuck? How did that happen? I don't know, but let me tell you. Sorry about that. Yeah. That's okay, yeah. But this is this is cute. That's what this is. This is cute. Shifting gears here. Very cute. And um oh you tweeted about the cinema thing. I forgot to mention that. What happened there? What happened there again? Oh, uh Chris uh, Cinema was doing the thing she does where she like, you know, dresses oh, like okay. a hundred games character. By the way. And this is um bad. yeah, I <laughs> I'm still waiting. I'm still fucking waiting for them to reclassify gig workers as employees. Yeah, this is so. This is uh, in case you can't see Ed's tweet, <laughs> which is the famous Kamala. We did it, Joe. We did it. Right. That's what that's what she's saying in this vid in this yeah. video. Uh -huh. So so Ed has you know put it as if it says they're asking when we're going to reclassify gig workers as employees, Joe. Brief, but um, here's yeah. your um. Where's the Kristen Cinema thing? Oh my god, that's really funny. The Lori Lightfoot thing. <laughs> yeah, so it's in, uh, Oh, that's Sandiego. P. Moskowitz. Nice. Well done, P. Moskowitz. Um, Karma San Diego <laughs> really fell off. Um, where is it? Uh, where's your thing about think, cinema? You'll you'll probably find it more easily if you go on the media tab. I oh, right. Yeah, the media tab. Yeah. What is he playing? Playing a Luddite, but is he really? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I post too much, so I'm not really a lot. I, I see it, Ed says, and then so this is this is interesting. So, what how would you describe what what uh what is happening here? What were you saying? Um, she dresses. This is she's doing the thing where she dresses as like a Hunger Games character. Why yeah. did you do that? Unclear. No, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> you know why did she go from a Green Party? member to whatever she is now. I have a certain... Oh, this is good. Look, this is good. Kristen I, Cinema and then, yeah, Hunger Games, yeah. I, I, but she, but her, what does her ring say? It says, fuck off. That's why it's making the rounds? Mm -hmm. That's exactly why. That is, wow. Girl power. 
denying women uh, fifteen dollars an hour, but giving them a lot of, so but not giving any fucks with her fuck off ring. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I cut you off, Ed. No, it's powerful. It's an inspiring story from Christmas. The senator who's blocking everything that we want. Yeah. <laughs> I suspect that, like, she may have been like a, 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 a opportunist, uh, something like that. Like, no yeah. more than that. Like a oh, like an operative, uh, like perhaps, uh, because the Green Party thing makes absolutely no sense otherwise. And in in the early two thousands, the FBI was kind of like acting psycho, and um, uh, yeah, um. Yeah. Well, we'll find out in like 60 years when all that stuff's declassified. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I will not let myself die until I find out whether or not. Oh, we can I show you? Every single declassified record and find out who was an op and who wasn't. I, I, op or I, not. I, oh my God, we should do a game. Op well, or not. Well, we, but I should change it to like volunteer op because that's more common with the volunteer. Everyone in BreadTube is just a volunteer op, in my opinion. If oh, right. On unwitting, usually. By the way, can I show you a photo of my. Oh, my Look, my that's my mom. Adorable. And the, on the left. Oh, Who's the two young kids? Okay, so my mom is on the, my mom is a little girl on the left. Mm -hmm. This is my uncle, her brother. These are my oh, yeah. grandparents. Those are the ones that like is that the uncle that she always fought with like all the time? Like she said that she like would get into like physical fights with uh, one of her brothers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, Esha's really pulling back. I'm not sure that was public information, but actually, it's in her book called "The War at Home." It's literally called "The War at Home," so it is public information. Okay. Although no, she doesn't. She focuses on her parents, not on the brother. But that, yeah, everyone should get the book "The War at Home," though. And look, this is my um, uh, grandfather uh -huh. with the cigarette in his mouth, and that's I my grandmother. That, yeah. She looks just like her mom. Yeah, she, yeah. And then here's a little. This is because my Vietnam? mom's birthday. Yes, for Vietnam. Look, there's my pregnant mom and my dad. Aw. Yeah, and then there we are. Look at this jazzy outfit I have on. Little, like, uh, purple leopard shirt. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. I gotta have Dennis on, our family friend, who went to war. No, went to jail for refusing to fight in Vietnam. He was part of the Fort Hood Three. Oh. I wish I'd interviewed my uncle more. But I will do a special on my uncle on May 20th, which was his birthday. Okay, yeah, yeah, last time you I saw that amazing speech from the CPUSA last time. Yeah, yeah, he was good. Yeah, um, everyone interview people who are alive who have important. Well, uh, they don't even have to have important stories. Just that they're. Oh, this is what I'm gonna say, Ed. Uh -huh. But yeah, interview people and videotape it or audio tape it. Here's what I was gonna say. When you were talking about photos i grew up with very loving doting parents very busy mm -hmm. um uh my yeah and they weren't really into they weren't that great about taking photos and mm -hmm. i all, and, so i grew up thinking that it took years to develop film <laughs> because my parents would like get stuff like way late I thought they sent it away and it took forever to get back. They would just like forget about it and then uh, send it off or they would send it off and forget about it. So anyway, little. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, um. All right. Well, everyone follow these great guests. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Yep. And, of course. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm we'll waiting soon. for the Zig. I can't pronounce his name, but his article. Big Brzezinski. Yeah. Oh, Brzezinski. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll have Matt or Fall on. Yeah, I gotta work. I'm starting to that. On to I gotta start working on. First, I gotta also make sure my thesis is correct because I may just be spewing some like nonsense revisionist position that's not actually supported. But this is my reading of it, so we'll see. I'll do the read. Yeah. When did the one-hour photo become real? I mean, <laughs> a thing, not real. Makes it sense. You're you're off Twitter. Okay, well, I'll just start. I don't know what I'll do. Uh, morning, Mika and Joe. Morning, Micah. Is it Micah or Mika? I can't remember. Yeah, it's Mika. Mika, yeah. Mika. Yeah. Anyway, thanks guys for coming. Make sure you become uh, Patreon supporters of the Katie Helper Show, which is patreon.com slash the Katie Helper Show. Let me just check really quickly, not to self-own, but if anyone joined, I'll read them their names out. Actually, I got to read their names out. Uh, this is when I try to do something fun. Leslie Leaders, let's see. Let's see what we got. Okay, here we go. Ready? Yeah. All right. Here's what we got. We got Mr. Mop. You really mopped that one up. I try to come up with little things. Okay, thank you, Mop. Mm -hmm. um, 
We call Bodhi Map Mapo. I have a friend who's Colombian. She calls her Mapo. Um, even though Mapo is not actually it's a Spanglish word, but yeah. Adrian L. Adrian. Like from Rocky. Oh. That's a, that, that's me shouting my gratitude. Yeah. And uh anyone else? Let's see. Um, got... Mr. Pop. He ooh, that my voice just popped. Um you're on fire, killing it with these. These puns. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah. Michelle Smith, Miss Mrs. Smith goes to Katie Halper's Patreon. That's funny. Frank M. M. Oh my God. <laughs> it's good, right? Yeah. Harvijay. Harvijay. Wait, let's see. Did you go up or down? In your thing, because that's I'm either gonna thank you. Let's see, up or down? Oof. I'm sorry. Wow, <laughs> curse. Just kidding. I, I but I do not want it. I did not want to shed light on. I should not have elevated that. Um, yeah. This week, Lily, though, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say that this week I'll be like doing um, because it's like takes thirty seconds to debunk all of like Prager you stupid nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll be doing like that 30 second debugger. So uh, debunker, sorry. Um, just watch out for Thursday. Uh, Why Thursday? Is no, when it's you're at doing? 30 seconds, three zero oh, seconds. When are you going to do it? You got to come up, come on and do it here too. Okay. After you're doing your show. Uh, Lily. I'll, I'll, I'll upload the video. I'll, I'll send you the video and then you can just air Great. it. Lily Holden. Thank you. Holden for holding it down. Sigh. Sigh. What a sigh of relief I got from your support. Um, I think that's, yeah, that's pretty, uh, oh, let's see. Um, Carol Dunn, don't know what I would do without you. Ronald Hinchley in a pinchley, he came through. Alexis has, has a great heart. Huh. Will core, core value of wills is to support independent media like this. Hmm. And, uh. Let's see, did that person go up or down? Well, we'll have to do the rest of this next time. But if you, if I didn't read your name, you're going to get a shout out on the next episode, as Dr. Dre says. Well, Dr. not the Dre. shout out part. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right, everyone. Um, thank you so much for reals. And I will see, have a blessed week and see you soon. Yep. Um, you. And subscribe so you don't miss anything. And we're dropping. I made a post about this. We're dropping a really good interview this week. I can't say anything else about it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I'll okay. be watching it. Right. Bye. Bye-bye.